All right. It is June 25th, and this is the every F and F. Pop- AC the air conditioner is on. That's <laughs> a that's a good opening. <laughs> this open was too cold. <laughs> Um, it is June 25th, and this is the Every FNFF podcast, and I am Curtis Ware, and I, with me as always, Carl Germ, and we have a guest today, what? which is, I know, right? It's only our second one, and we already have a guest, already. because we've determined that our personalities together are not enough to actually <laughs> not <laughs> hold attention. Enough. Right. So, why don't you uh, introduce yourself, and my name is Ali, Ali Floyd, and I go by uh, John Tier on Twitter, whatever, anything else. Follow. Facebook, blah, blah, blah. It, follow, love, hold, hug, mm-hmm. keep forever. All, all that good internet stuff. Um, so this time, so last la- last time on the show, we said that we were going to play from where you actually enter Eris's house to actually leaving Midgar immediately after the show. I was, I regretted that, and I was like, that is <laughs> way too lot. much. The first episode went an hour and 40 minutes, mm-hmm. which I did not expect. And uh, so we decided instead to go up to where the plate falls. Spoiler warnings, as always, yep. this is a podcast about the plot of the game. So you will be spoiled. <laughs> we're going all the way to the end of disc one today. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. We're going to be going up to where the meteor is about to hit uh, the planet. Spoilers. We're going to be going to halfway through disc nine. Oh, disc nine? Uh, FF9. <laughs> disc two. <sighs> well, I've already tripped numbers. over. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I've we, already tripped over myself enough. So uh, why don't you start us off? Cool. Um, so I, I just kind of want to do a, a little roundup from last week. Um, I got some more. We figured out some more information about Loveless that is, in fact, <laughs> a My Bloody Valentine album. Right. And apparently, I think the developers just really liked that album when they were making the game. So they, like, stuck it in, I guess, maybe as, like, an Easter egg. But then they were, like, when more and more Final Fantasy VII games were coming out, they were like, no, let's just include this as part of, like, the the mythos. And I think it, it actually became, like, an epic story, like, like the Odyssey or yeah. the Iliad and... I th- in other, I think in like Crisis Core, it has more of a uh, more like more significance to it. Like, really? There's like a whole poem and stuff. I I'm gonna have to play that game at some point. Like I've I, I refused it. to earlier, like really? when it came out, because I was like, no, they're gonna ruin it. It's gonna be about like they're gonna change things. Because I remember the good version of Cloud. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember when they came out with uh, the Advent Children movie or whatever, and they were like, hey, Rufus didn't die. Hey, yeah. this didn't happen. Actually, everybody's alive. And I was like, well, we're doing a lot of spoilers. Like, yeah. <laughs> Not just for yeah, Advent yeah. Children, but, <laughs> yeah, but just was, don't watch the movie. Yeah, yeah. We're just, we're I just remember liking the movie but i don't know well, like, it we'll looks great. It. yeah it was right. flashy it was yeah. i liked the like weird sephiroth clone people I yeah think. i don't know i, I watched yeah. it in high school so i think anything i guess it was high school yeah when yeah. i watched it yeah i think they came out with a 15 movie as well did you know that i uh was that the anime didn't they king's come? glaive did they it was uh, an anime or was i that? think it was a full 3d affair i might be thinking of I, the animatrix i could be wrong we're once again we're just giving away the fact that we are woefully unqualified to oh yeah to tell people a, about final fantasy especially because i called myself a master last week which is <laughs> objectively false right right all right i'm just here to fit in guys well, that was our, our corrections portion. Yeah. Just every episode, we'll just be like, hey, so here's what we were dead wrong about last time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So I believe we left off. Uh, we're going to Eris' house. Yeah. We just met Eris. And uh, we got to go through the Sector 6 slums to get there. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Um, uh, one thing I noticed that's pretty funny is uh, you can actually go back to the church like where you just escaped from Mm -hmm. and like there's children there who are just kind of playing around and they're like, Oh, we're watching the flowers for that lady. And they have some cute dialogue and stuff. But, uh, like, uh, the Turks are just nowhere to be found. (laughs) Even though they were just, you were like, you literally walked like a city block and they're (laughs) tailing you and have been tailing you for a while. (laughs) They're very efficient and undermanned. I mean, they're they're a pretty, yeah, they're not really good throughout the course (laughs) of the game. When they keep popping up, they're not really all that helpful. Right. um, Right. Anyway, let's just get right into it. And yeah, we're, we get right to Eris's house. Yeah, absolutely. So we walk through the sixer, sixer, sector six slums, get to Eris's house, who I said last time is in a, ridiculous garden like it's very nicely kim's yeah. garden a lot of plants it's the only place in midgar that 
fits that definition. Which is really nice thematically too, because she's like the flower girl. Like it makes sense that she would live in such a right, a, a, like a beautiful place with all these flowers. And as we're getting ready to learn from her mom, Elmira, she's always had a connection to the planet. Yeah, so they could kind of have something to do with that, you know. Also, interesting fact um, regarding the Aerith Aerith debate. Yes. Um, so I heard I didn't get to like uh, like research it at all, <laughs> but one of my friends reached out and said that um, it's. Aerith because that's like an anagram for Earth. So I hear you there. Mm-hmm. My argument would be this. If if that was so, we should be spelling it E-A first because in the Japanese it no, it's is like tool A-A-R-T, right? Or Aerith or whatever. So I was like, so we would, if we want to say that it's an anagram for Earth, then we better say it the same way. Yeah. Which we don't. There should be no we change I. it. Yeah. Yeah. So whatever. It's fine. I don't care either it's way. Fine. You're, you're biased. People can, I guess I'm biased. Your real because name is Curtis. It's right, yeah. And you go in, by well, Curtis. In the, in the demo, my name's Curtis, <laughs> but in the actual release, it's I've been Curtis. sitting on that joke for like a week, and it never, it never got any funnier. I think I got it got to use it. <laughs> oh, were you going to use it? Oh, no. Oh, I, no, I said finally got to use it. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to steal your material. <laughs> You're more than welcome to. You, you probably won't be. Like, if you steal our material, you'll just be embarrassed when people are like, what are you talking about? This is terrible. <laughs> like, <laughs> go somewhere better. Um, well, I thought so, yeah. it was a knee slapper. <laughs> so we walk into um, Eris' house, and we meet her mother, Elmira. 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 Um, who immediately just kind of knows what's going on. She says, oh, yep. you were followed again, again, weren't you? Yeah, again. So this has obviously happened multiple times in the past. But Yeah, which is kind of interesting because, I mean, with the, the whole bodyguard dynamic and Cloud mm-hmm. kind of being like, oh, I'm going to you know, make sure she gets home and stuff. It's like she's been through this uh, so ma- like uh, apparently a lot of times. Enough for a mom to be like, God, again? Right, right. And so she introduces Cloud. Um, and then Cloud says, you know, I need to go to Tifa's bar. Or he, I guess he announced that previously but we said we're gonna go to the house first right yeah. yeah yeah so we're we're in the house now and another nice little detail is that there's a lot of flowers just all around the house like as yeah d- decor yeah and um so is it her mom who suggests spending the night first yeah so yeah, what happens yeah. is um he's like oh i gotta get back to tifa's bar there's a little cute dialogue there between oh Aaron yes and, yeah and go ahead. where yeah. she's like oh wait tifa like is she is she a girl and cloud's like yep and she's like, oh, uh, is she a girlfriend? Right. And you, you get an option there. Um, yeah, no way. <laughs> or, yeah, there's or, like, yeah no, that's right. Yeah, there's like no way. And there's like, yeah, yeah that's right. Which and one did you pick? I went with, uh, I think I went with both to get notes for it. But I, okay. I usually go with, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think. I, I went with no way. I, I feel it's like I no went way. with no way this time. Yeah. Just because it was like, she's not. Like, there's no evidence of it. So I try to be yeah. honest in these games. Yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. So. Just trying to actually what? role play. Yeah, exactly. Ollie, what is the what is the right answer there? What would, you know, I would figure that it would be more in his character to say no way. He just doesn't seem like yep. he's gonna BS it. Yeah, know? that's fair. Yeah, yeah, that definitely does does fit his character. Yeah, people so, always um, bring bring that up too. Yeah, so they decide to spend the night at the house before they leave out to Sector Seven the next day. And as Aerith run, Aerith run, Aerith, there I go. I'll say whatever. It's fine. Uh, as she runs off to bed, her mother takes Cloud aside and says, "Hey, I don't mean to be rude." But do you mind leaving tonight? Like yeah. I can don't tell, tell yeah, don't tell her. Don't tell her. Just leave tonight. Uh, I can tell that you're in soldier. She recognizes that he yeah. has the Mako eyes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you know she's been through too much. She's been involved with soldier in the past. So just leave tonight without telling her. Yeah. And uh, I don't think he says anything to her. Yeah. But I feel like it's implied that he's like, yeah, okay. He's like, that's yeah, this is yeah. a good idea. Yeah. So they scoot off to bed. Um. And then, you know, during the middle of the night, you play as Cloud waking up, and he's like, all right, I got to get out of the house. And the last time I played it, did it perfectly. But the first time, there's so many squeaky floorboards yeah, upstairs. Right. So I think, the, I think the trick is that you don't, act, if you don't run, it makes it a lot easier. I thought that, Cause but there you is can one, still, yeah. at least. I mean, there's probably a lot, but when I, when I first went through, I did it right the first time, and then I, like, reset, because I was like, I remember it being harder than that. Yeah. So I went through, and walking made it easier, but I, I like, intentionally got caught. Another yeah. funny thing is you can just open up a- Aerith's door. And oh, she's really? Like, I yeah. think I did that the first time I ever played it. Yeah, you're like, oh, I want to see what she says. Yeah. Yeah. What, just, what does happen? She says the exact same thing that she says if she hears you. Oh, you okay. Out. All right, all right. That makes sense. Yeah, so you get out, um, and you start running. Oh, actually, before, let me step back just a hair. Sure. Uh, 
when you go to sleep before Cloud wakes up, he hears the voice again, that voice that we've heard a couple times. Yep. Um, and it says, I haven't slept in a bed like this for a long time. And that's where you Very get ominous. F- yeah, yeah. And that's where we get the flashback, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. So and we- another interesting thing I noticed, and um, I didn't get to like look back at like the screenshots that I took last time, but mm-hmm. Cloud's dialogue is in like white. It's like a black background with white when yeah. Cloud is talking. And then the other is like a like more translucent, like gray kind right, of Right, during these sequences. So I'm wondering yeah. if that's like universal throughout the game because again, like we don't know who's talking. We don't know what's really going on. Um, but I know now that when Cloud is talking, it might just be in that like slightly different font to kind of right, right. illustrate that. Right, right. And that makes a lot of sense, yeah. And in this case, it's that gray font mm-hmm. that says, I haven't slept in a bed like this for a long time. Yeah. So, But then we get a flashback to when Cloud was younger. Um, and not too young. He's he's still an adult. He's the adult model of Cloud yeah. in this. But he's at his own home, and his mom's there. And his mom's kind of like just being like the kind of JRPG mom, I mm-hmm. guess. You know, who's like, oh, you've grown so much. Oh, you know, you're you're getting so big. You need to get yourself a girlfriend. You know, mm-hmm. and, and started Pokemon. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did the start of Pokemon. Are you saying that Squirtle is my first girlfriend? Or maybe Squall is, I don't know. Okay. Maybe you just mix them up so you get like a starter of every fa- like Final Fantasy main character. Oh yeah, okay. I thought or you just, said I thought okay. you said that's the way Pokemon starts. Yes, that's what I said. That is what you said. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. For I the record, like, Squall was my first girlfriend. <laughs> that's pretty. <laughs> it's very no, it was very moody. Pretty it lame. Was, I was into that. Yeah, in, yeah, in yeah, high school. Yeah. Um, but uh, she it's funny. She tells him to uh. To get an older girlfriend. Yeah, you know, I like that detail. I know. Like, she's like, you need an older girlfriend, mm-hmm. one to take care of you. Because like, She seems like a good mom. She seems it's like, like my mom. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, you're in, inept. You're incapable. You need to have a shout girlfriend. Outs, shout outs to all our moms. Shout outs to the moms. Shout, you know, shout outs to uh, everyone's yeah. mom. How about that? I really broaden very the nice. scope. It's very nice. I know. There's a lot of... Uh, mom stuff going on in this game a lot that's gonna get real wild Mm -hmm. (laughs) so um to brace for impact on that yep so after we leave uh elmira's house you know eris is still sleeping um we run back through the sector six slums which i should mention real quick because we didn't actually say this on the way there is a pipe in the sector six slums yep with a with a man inside and on the way uh, Eris pulls you aside before you walk in and says, uh, this guy are sick. Right. <laughs> Which has been fixed in the Switch version. I was very bummed about that. I know. It says, this guy is sick. But in the original Final Fantasy VII, the discs, <laughs> the text is, this guy are sick. Yep. Have you so, ever looked inside like the decorations in that? Pipe? I was going to say that, too. What did he win all those trophies for? He's got right? a lot of trophies. <laughs> There's so many trophies. So many trophies, and there was this thing that I couldn't tell right next to the trophies. Is is it either a dog bowl or a Roomba? I, I see it. I'm looking at it I'm right now. I'm, well. I'm gonna yeah. turn my switch so we can see it. Yeah, it looks. It but definitely looks it. like a dog bowl. Yep. Yeah, and so he's got. He's living in this pipe. He's got a TV. He's got a bunch of trophies. He's got some like crushed up like cans, like soda cans or beer cans. I was wondering, like, is he sick? I, I think he actually is sick. Because at first I was like, oh, maybe he's just drunk. Like we've all been there. Well, we mm-hmm. do learn something about him. We get our first. Um, our first notion of another concept in Final Fantasy yep. uh, Seven, where they say, "Hey, this guy has a tattoo on his hand. Yep. That's the number two. number two. And so, by its own, like by itself, at this point in the game, that doesn't sound that crazy. It's just yeah. a man with a tattoo of a number two. But as we progress through the game, we're going to find out that that actually has a lot of significance yep. going on. So, and what he's sick from. Exactly. So we're start seeing more people with these tattoos as we progress who are also sick. Right. Yeah." Um, but for now though, they, you know, you just go in, you see him and his <laughs> giant set of trophies and, uh, his, uh, lion with his clothes drying on it. He won, uh, he, he was the best at being sick. <laughs> he was the best at our being sick <laughs> and he sure did. Um, <laughs> it's called out from work every day. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing that you can do, you can do it on the way or you can do it leaving. So it's fine time to talk about it now since we're running away from Aris's house, uh, in the middle of the night. There's a house in Sector 6 that you can go up into where there is a child sleeping on a bed. Mm-hmm. And you open you can open the drawers in his room. Yep. You can open the top one and there's nothing in there. You can open the bottom one there's nothing in there. in there. And if you talk to the kid in his sleep, he mumbles something about a hidden drawer. And so if you go back to it and click it, it'll say, oh, open the hidden drawer between the two. Yep. And inside is five gill. Yep. 
did you take it? I did not. Okay, do you, uh, we'll get we'll get to it. Did you do take you, it? No, I didn't. Okay. I have before. I have in, in the, the past. past as well. Yeah, but I don't remember what happened. And there is a difference. Yeah, there is a difference. I don't even remember taking it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it was up there. Um, we also see uh, somebody in the slums who accuses Avalanche of being the aggressors in this whole situation. Yeah, just kind of a NPC who's just standing there being like, you know, we're things aren't great, but it's fine. And these guys keep blowing shit up yep. and making a problem for everyone. So like Avalanche doesn't have complete support of the people in the slums. I, 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 I think I wrote that down. I was like, this dude, I think I wrote him down as a centrist because he's like, man, Shinra's terrible, but Avalanche like that, like right, we don't need right. that. So he's very much like, well, it could go along with what there's a line. I think we skipped over in the first episode where somebody says, you know, if Avalanche at least would have blown that reactor up at night, people could have died yeah, in their sleep. Which is an important thing. Yeah, mm. so there probably are innocent people yeah. dying in these explosions too. Yep. So, which is kind of. Yeah, it, it grays everything a little more because it's like, right. yeah, objectively they're trying to save the planet, but they're also killing innocent people. And you kind of see more of the repercussions of that throughout this, the, the, right. what we're going to talk about today. Right, right. Um, so, why don't you take us from there? Okay, so let's see. Um, so uh, another note that I had was there was like a weird uh, girder by the save point. This is like completely throwaway and unnecessary, but uh. there's some uh, there's some kanji on it. And I was like, I wonder what that says. So I reached out to um, some of our friends who speak Japanese and they all kind of had a, a hard time like deciphering it. But it's mm -hmm. something along the lines that I came up with, like when I typed in the characters in Google, yeah. like, it was something like uh, destroying god <laughs> it was like what? yeah like it's insane i don't think it actually is that like we were trying to come up with like what it might be but we okay we didn't figure it out so i mean if anyone god i hope it is that though i yeah. hope that that is intentional and i but hope that in a weird way not like oh um we're destroying god i read it more as like like the one character is shen which is for god yeah. I guess, and um it's more like I, I i would think like a god of destruction okay so, uh, yeah. i don't know yeah, that's wild that's wild there's some cool graffiti in, in this area. In this area, yeah, in, in Midgar especially. There's just a lot of really cool stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, we walk out of the slums. I'm sorry to take it back from you. but No, hey, no that's okay. So um, we walk out of the slums, and the very next screen, as we're getting ready to... Someone's waiting there for there's us. There's somebody waiting there for us. Eris has found out, and not only has she come after us, she's beaten us to where we need to go. Yep. So she's standing right there as soon as we roll up, and um, it's kind of like, hey, I can eat... I, I knew you were going to try to do this, you know. You yeah. thought you could just leave without me knowing. But well, well, well. Yeah, yeah. Look who's here. Yeah. Look who decided to show up. <laughs> That's right, yeah. But she's in it She's in it to win it, so. There's a great little bit of back and forth, too. Cloud's like, oh, I couldn't ask you to go. I knew it would be dangerous. And she was just like, are you done? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You <laughs> just asked him if, yeah. if you're done. She just goes, are you done? Yeah, yeah, it's really good. For, for being kind of an anime trope sometimes, at least visually, she surprises me in how sassy she is. Yep. <laughs> we were talking about that on the, the last episode, that like, one of the reasons that she's my favorite character in the game is because she's like so sassy mm -hmm. and she's like so quick on everything. Yeah, she's a city yeah. girl. Yeah. Y yep. Exactly. Yeah. And you would think like, oh, she's you know this damsel in distress mm -hmm. and this this like strong protagonist has to save her. And there's like countless times where she's just like, no, I can take care of myself. Yeah. Yeah. And does so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really awesome. Yeah. And uh, so this next screen that we walk into is a shortish screen. Um, We'll talk real quick about how the layout of it is very confusing. Yeah. Because as I was talking to our producer, Alex, about it, uh, he was like, how do I get up these little girders? Like, how do I get to the end of this little screen? And I remember when I was younger being, being on the screen there. for like an hour and not being like, well, how do you get past? Yep. And it's just this one screen is just there's some visual elements to it, some visual design to it that's just so confusing. Yeah. And I would say probably not the best yeah it's, it's definitely a product of its time where you know like atmospherically it looks really great you're like okay right. this place is really run down there's girders it's, everywhere the, there's the, no it looks like there's been a, an earthquake on a street the yeah. the street is different the potholes levels. are out of control yeah yeah there's a um, there looks what looks to be like earth moving equipment or that's yeah. all shut down and everything and yeah and you're kind of traversing it right yeah so and the funny thing too is if you're stuck traversing this area there's random encounters on and we run into one of the best enemies in any jrpg ever the hell house the hell house the hell house oh, i have boy. so many pictures of hell house oh, so on my switch i love hell house i can't wait for the remake just so i can see what oh, that I, model looks i like. hope they have hell house in the I, remake if they don't I, i'm gonna return it to the store i really hope that they just keep the exact model 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> like everything else is beautiful, like really great <laughs> particle exactly effects. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All that and stuff. But then I, it's just like that goofy giant house I that know. you're fighting. So, so why don't you describe it for us a little sure. bit? Sure. Let me see if I got a picture here. So okay. I can, here, I so I can do it. Do you want to look at mine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you go. So yeah, it's just this this giant like or the, uh, this like small ish house that looks like a <laughs> shed. Yeah. But um, as you attack it, it gets more and more damaged, and then like some limbs come out and stuff. Like yeah. ro- I think they're like robotic-looking limbs. I thought it was like a giant skeleton. But or there's something. D- I don't yeah, know. there's a giant skeleton ha- like head that comes out at the yeah. front. Yeah, yeah, it, it's so wild. These so things are tough too. They're they're kind of assholes yeah. for real. Like they do a lot of damage. They got some good moves, and the, the names yeah. of all their moves are great. They sound yeah. like a, a '90s era wrestler where there's the suicide drop. Yeah, there's oh, the yeah. suicide drop yeah. or bomb or whatever it is. Yeah, there's yeah. the hell bomber and yeah. the hell press. It's uh, the hell press. Like the hell right. press just sounds like a yeah. wrestling heel. Like that's yeah. his finishing move, and like you don't want to be on the receiving end. Right, right. Well, um, you know what this reminded me of when I saw this. It, have you seen the episode of The Simpsons where Probably. there's the guy with a very tall man in the very oh, small car yes. and Love Nelson's yeah. laughing at him and he just goes, this is the largest automobile that I could afford. <laughs> like, Do you think that's very funny? It's so like, wow, I was, I was fighting Hell House and I was just like, how would you like it if someone hell pressed you? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's like the little vibe I get from Wave like, to the MPs. Wa- yeah, wa- Blow uh, them kisses. <laughs> Blow them kisses. It's so good. And that's exactly what I was like. I was looking at this skull, like this like skeleton stuck in this tiny house and just being like, this that's is so the good. largest house that I could afford. Oh, <laughs> But um, yeah. So you finish off Hell House. <laughs> There's also more of mm. the enemies that it, we didn't we alluded to last week, but we didn't really talk about them. Uh, they're called Whole Eaters, as in like whole they're eaters. gonna eat huh. you whole. Not not a great way yeah, to say it. Just yeah. Whole Eater. And they're ho- and when you have multiple enemies on screen, they're labeled A, B, C, on and on mm-hmm. and on. So one of our r- returning gags is uh, the B Whole Eater. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Um, so in the next screen here, we have a, a playground, right? Mm-hmm. So we roll up on this playground, um, and Eris says, oh, it's still here, which I thought was, like, kind of, not weird, but I was like, this is two screens away from your house. Yeah. Like, which, How- to be fair, I don't know what's, like, two streets north of Market Street, yeah. so... Maybe that's fine that she yeah. doesn't hasn't been to this playground that, in a while. That is kind of fair. I've been through whole sections of this, or I've avoided whole sections of a city for like a year straight. Right, and right, just right. Completely forgot what was there. Yeah, yeah. So at first I was like, oh come on, this is right here. If you used to go here all the time, but then again, you know. And she also spends a lot of time, I guess, based on the intro that she's on, you know, the upper plate. So oh, that's true. I didn't so even think about that. You do see her, her on there. the upper plate, really. So she is actually getting to the upper plate. Yeah. To do so, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I guess uh, so. Yeah, if she's is, is that why there's like sunlight? Then I guess I don't know if well, I her house that. is on well, the well bottom. when she's selling yeah. the flowers. It's like, right oh, right, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Um, so yeah, that could be. You know, she spent her time doing that, and she also got Grubhub recently, so she never goes out to you anymore. Yeah, just, well, why bother? Yeah, bring it right to your hell house. Exactly. Yeah. She, <laughs> she seems more. <laughs> She seems more like the type that would have Grubhub as like her app that she does as a gig. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. she would be the delivery. Yeah, yeah. The, gig, the gig economy is rough, but she's <laughs> she's making the best of it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So um, so pretty immediately, uh, she's like she turns around and she looks at Cloud and she goes, "Oh, I I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh no, I'm so far away from home. Whatever will I do or whatever, you know?" And it kind of making fun of Cloud, you know. Yep. And you have an option again to say, "Take her home." Or go on to Sector 7. So she's once again being like, oh, you think I'm just going to break down because I'm far away from home. But that's not the case. And so I, I chose go on to Sector 7. Yeah. Because I was like, yeah, I'm not trying to. <laughs> yeah, I think I did the same. Yeah. yeah. Um, so why don't you, you're, you're better at doing like the, the talky bit. So why don't you tell us about uh, kind of what they do while they're at the playground. Sure. So they uh, they kind of just sit on top of the the cute slide that is like a like a cat or something. Yeah. And um, they they just get to talking, and uh, she mentions that she um, she used to have a boyfriend. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I can't remember if she says he there's any kind of like if she like is reminded of him for any reason, but um, uh, I believe she said he was in soldier. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So they're they're having a conversation, and he's like, "Oh, wait, I might have I might have known him." And right. he's like, "Oh, were you guys like serious?" And she was like, "No, not really, but I I did like him for a while." So right. she's like, "Oh, yeah, I had a boyfriend. He was in Soldier," but she's kind of like downplaying it a little. 
Right, right. And she also asked Cloud what rank he was. Yeah. Yeah, and he's like, oh, first class. But he has a moment. He does have a moment where, where that translucent thinking, text the, comes up. Mm-hmm. It's his that, first class. Yep. So you get this. So whoever he's talking to in these flashbacks gave him the information first class. Yeah. So even, you know, even this early in the game, more and more we're saying that like, Cloud maybe not all there, and there's somebody in his there's head kind of feeding on, him information yeah. or something, yeah. And, but an interesting thing is that Eris says, oh, like, like first class that's just a, the same as him yeah I think that's yeah. actually what what leads her to talking about her boyfriend her first boyfriend right right yep um and then they're interrupted rudely rudely interrupted yeah. by the gate to sector seven opening up mm-hmm. and out coming i don't know how would you describe it it's a very weird circus looking like <laughs> carriage that's uh like a horse-drawn carriage but it's being drawn by a chocobo a purple chocobo is it purple oh a what purple chocobo fuck wagon. Yeah. You might say. Oh yeah. It's like the kill bill thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh interestingly, someone's on the back of it. Yes. Actually, is it purple? I didn't it's got a purple top and floor. The uh the, the uh, screenshot that I have has a uh, a text box over it. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> it's it has red walls and then the sea, the, the roof is actually purple on yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. thought you meant a purple chocobo. No, 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 no. The too. chocobo is yellow. My my mistake. It, the the fuck wagon is purple. Yeah, the chocobo is your standard yellow. yellow. Your standard yellow. Classic. Your classic yellow fuck chocobo. Gets. That's the one. Uh, <laughs> but Wait. yeah, so on the back of it is Tifa. Mm-hmm. All right. And she she's in not her normal wear. Right, she's, right, she's in like a blue dressed. dress. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. No, that's that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Cloud screams out and he's like Tifa. Yeah. And th- I think that opens up a little bit of dialogue too with. Uh, with Aerith, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't remember the ex- exactly what it is. Well, I, well, Aerith does say like, "Oh, she looked kind of weird." Like she's like, she looked right. odd. But like, I, I didn't get that as in like the way of like, oh, like she like, oh, that's the girl that you were talking but about. I like, think oh, that's I, the context that I got the first time around, and then yeah. seeing it again, I'm like, oh, well, she doesn't sound too judgy. Yeah, and yeah. especially like with how like their interactions kind of play out, like going forward um right. like it, it looks like she's more like oh no like she like there's something wrong like she like she maybe like the like woman's intuition or something she knows that like this isn't a good situation for tifa to be in right and, right you know they should probably do something right right again she she just knows the city that well yeah yeah yeah, yeah because yep. the very next section like where they're heading and the way that we we go next is toward wall market the uh, sector five slums i think is wall market is that right Oh, this is Sector 5, if I remember right. Yeah, yeah. it is 5, yeah. yeah. Um, so we walk into Sector 5, and... New song. New song plays. What is the song? It's, uh, I think the title is Oppressed People slash The Oppressed, and it's just a banger. Okay, like all right. A little Yo, bass line. Dope, like, dope. Yeah. All right. Very regular. Um, so this place, mm-hmm. I, someone else describe it. Someone with better words. Um, yeah, it's not a, good, <laughs> not, not a good place. Yeah, not not a great place. It's um, like the, the bad part of town. Something Eris says as soon as you walk in, like the opening dialogue box is, mm-hmm. this place is scary in a lot of ways, especially for a girl. So we've got to find Tifa fast. Fast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like red light district extreme. Yeah, yeah. It, it shows you how rough life is in the slums, that this is just here and accepted, especially like with the interactions that you can have with some of the NPCs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's some <laughs> there's some real scumbags here. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like one of the first ones you can talk to is just a guy walking around. He is referring to Aerith and he calls her a heifer. Yeah. He's yeah, like, he's that's a, a nice heifer you got there. And I think he says like, oh, you should take her to the take her to the dawn. Yeah. Take her to the dawn. You'll get a mint. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. his words. And it's so just like he's like, hey, man, you got a good looking girl. Why don't you take her to the dawn? He'll pay you. Yeah. So like, which is not. Yeah, with for for somebody just walking down the street to mm-hmm. be like, hey, that's just what we do here. It's normal, you know. You can kind of get the feeling of yeah. what kind of area this is. Um, so uh, there's there's a lot of uh, places in this um, in this part uh, like part uh, like minor things where there's a little side quest that you end up having to go on. I don't yeah. know if we have to necessarily talk about all of them. Did you want to? Or? Right. Uh, like the item shop is really fun. It's got some charm. Is that the one with the computer in it? Yeah. So there's. I a, wanted to talk about the item shop. Yeah. 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 So, oh, you want to do okay? Yeah. No, go go um, ahead. Yeah. So there is a tent 
in the middle of Wall Market that just says item in real big letters on it. And I was like, oh, sick. An buy item shop like will go in there and buy items for the area. And there's just a computer in the middle of the room and a bunch of gadgetry on the walls, right? And, and then at the very, very top of the room, there is just a minigun hanging there, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so you walk up, and I was like, okay, well, it's going to be like, like Wawa here in Philadelphia. You just walk up to the computer screen, you dial up what you want, and then it gets served to you. We'll just dial up some potions and, and it'll be good. A, a freshly made salad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's hoagie fest. We're going <laughs> <laughs> to get a turkey with a sauce on it. Oh, yeah. um, so you walk up to it and Cloud does a little boop, 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 hits the buttons. And then the minigun activates <laughs> as soon as he's done pressing the buttons, aims right where he's standing and he's able to see it and he jumps out of the way and it just fires on that spot and Cloud just says, broken. Yeah, like his reaction is so good. Like, yeah. like just his like, you know, soldier reflex is just kicking in. He's like, he gets out of the way of fire and he's just like, eh, broken. Yeah. Those are some good reflexes though. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. He just completely like no sells and he's like, eh, it's, you know, it's yeah, like, he's always hamming stuff up and like doing cartwheels off of trains when he doesn't have any <laughs> stuff. Like very <laughs> anime- you know, but in the, in this, it's like he's not really doing it for show. Maybe that's just the way he actually is. Like, right, right. So let's I tell you what. Let's talk about uh, a bit of instead of talking about each of the individual places, we'll talk about the mission that leads yeah. us to these individual yeah. places. So we know that um, uh, Tifa entered the city, and if you talk to a certain NPC, he goes, "Oh, Tifa, that's the new girl that the that just arrived, yeah. and she has an interview with the Dawn right now." So we hear about Don Corneo for the first time. Is that how you say it? Yeah, I think like so. Corneo. Corneo. Corneo, yeah. Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> yeah. This is a very Beavis and Butthead area of the game. Very, the yeah, way, yeah. So. Uh, so we learned that Tiva's has an interview with him right now, and you learn that he's the owner of the Honey Bee Inn, yeah. which is a gentleman's club, I guess you would say. Yeah. It's a lot of things a, all yeah. rolled up in one. Hotel. Which, which let's get into that in a second yeah, once we yeah, get yeah. onto the mission. Yeah. But so we kind of learn where we need to go, right? So we go to the Don's mansion, mm -hmm. right? And uh, the gentleman outside says, no men allowed. You can't come in here. You know, like the Don only sees women, and I don't even know who you all are. He, right? he actually says the, the Don doesn't like men. Is that yeah. what he says? Yeah, which no. it starts to kind of get into the territory of just being like, ooh, like some of this doesn't really age well, and that's kind of where we're going now. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, so he, I think, does does he say that Eris can come in right there? I can't remember. No, no, you just get turned away. Okay. So and, and then, then kind of, I think that's the trigger to start this this side quest. Yeah, and so so Eris and Cloud have a little aside to each other where Cloud, he's lamenting that he can't get in. He's like, how are we going to save Tifa? I can't get in there. We could bust up the place, but mm -hmm. I don't know if that'll go really well. And Eris just starts laughing, right? Like, while they're talking. Yep. Yeah, and he's like, well, hey, what's so funny? And what, you know, go ahead. He's like, my friend is in danger. Why are you laughing right yeah. now? Like, we're, <laughs> you're the one who told us to go fast. No, but she she's laughing and she says, um, let me see if I have the dialogue here, but she... She she has an idea. She says, uh, Cloud, why don't you dress up like a girl? It's the only way. <laughs> yeah. <and laughs> I just love how fast she comes up with that idea, too. Mm -hmm. Like, she had this plan the whole time. I know. Yep. It's, yeah, she had the plan the whole time since she first saw a Cloud, and she was just like, man, I would love to see him in a dress. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the excuse. That's how quickly she comes up with it. Um, so... Without Cloud's consent, she runs up to the the guard and says, "Hey, I have a hot friend, so I'm gonna go get her, and we're gonna both come back." Yeah. And you know, Cloud's like, "No, I don't want to do this. I can't do this. I'm too embarrassed." You know, so he doesn't want to do it. And this sends you on a mini game uh, of visiting all the different places in Wall Market and doing a lot of like scuzzy, <laughs> like you know what I mean, like uh, yeah. the behavior you would expect to. Uh, commence on in a red light district yeah so one of the first things that i did was uh you go into like this like this uh diner or like bar kind of area yeah um, where they tell you to sit anywhere and there's only there's one only seat one open seat. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you go there and you can you can order uh i think there's like three items on the menu mm -hmm. um and i think that all you have to really do here is just order it and say something nice about it yeah that's it you can all three i tried all three i did all the different yeah, options. I think it's all the same. It's like seventy gil for each of them, and then if yeah. you um, if you say like, oh, it wasn't that bad. Like they're like, oh, thanks. Here you can have this pharmacy uh, coupon. Coupon, yeah, they call it. yeah. And uh, with the pharmacy coupon, you can use it to buy some digestive to give to somebody who has. Is you, it the run? You can actually buy a, a couple okay. of things. You can you can 
traded for um, digesti- uh, gi- yeah, digestive <laughs> um, deodorant. And there's, there's another one that's a, like a D. I can't remember. Can you do anything with those? I don't think so. I think it just, I think it okay. just like gets, you don't get the key item that helps you. Okay, um, yeah. Because there's somebody in the bar who, I don't, was I really throwing up? Or... I, They're throwing would, up at it was, first. Yeah, because he's bent over the toilet. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and the, you it, give it to them, and then they go, oh, thanks. And it immediately fixes their throwing up. They yeah. just like are like, oh, that was that was great. <laughs> and they just leave and walk out of the bathroom, and the guy behind you runs into the bathroom it, real quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. Then you, you, can, you can actually go back into the bathroom and open the door, and, he just, and it just says, whoops. And, it, and the guy's like standing there. It's pretty now, good. Going back to the food bar real quick, there yeah. was one thing I noted, which one of the three things you can order is a Korean barbecue plate. Mm-hmm. I thought about it. There's no Korea in this world. <laughs> There's a Texas, There's a Texas in this Texas, world. Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were talking about that last time, that like Final Fantasy VII is canon Earth. Like it, it absolutely is. I thought you were going to be like, oh, Korean barbecue. Isn't that where you like have like the meats brought out to you and you throw it on the thing yourself? Like, oh, that, yeah. You're like, this isn't nice. I thought you were getting like semantics. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, disinfectants, the other thing that you can get. Okay, all right. Again, it doesn't yeah. matter. I just thought it was funny that I've really wanted to pick deodorant. Yeah. <laughs> um, and actually, uh, the, the bar where you give the person the digestive, you actually meet the dressmaker mm-hmm. who's there. His uh, son or his daughter, right? Daughter. His daughter. I believe. Yeah, tells you did, to like... Did we talk about the item that you get for giving the digestive to the... Uh, I think it's a, a, a like waitress or something who's, who's there. Oh, okay. I, yeah. So if you give her the digestive, I think she gives you sexy cologne. Is that what it is? Mm, I do remember <laughs> that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh, that's good. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So you get you get various items as you complete these different pieces of the minigame, right? And like some of them I think are funnier than others, but like I don't remember each one, but if you do and you want to say them, that's fine. Because no, like I, think I said, I don't, gonna, yeah, I don't remember them. There, there's a lot of good dialogue in here, but uh, I don't think it's. Yeah. It, we don't have to go into each yeah. line of dialogue. So, uh, so you find the dressmaker who agrees to make. Cloud address after Eris pushes Cloud away and says, "Yeah, go, go go to the bar, have a drink." And says, "Hey, my friend has always wanted to wear a dress." And the uh, dressmaker is like, "What a a, a big guy like him? Yeah. Was there a tough looking guy like him wants to wear a dress?" He and seems he, surprised about it, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, I'll explain yeah. why later. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he he agrees to do it. He's like, "All right, I'll make it. I'll make a dress. Let's do it." And he says he's been in a funk. He hasn't wanted to make any dresses. Yeah. Recently. He he was actually the guy at the bar who I think he just is, is, says, "Man, times are tough." He is the guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He just says, "Man, times are tough." If you talk to him beforehand. Yep. Um. So I tell you what, are we far in enough to get to the Honey Bee Inn? Yeah. I mean, you collect a couple items. You get a uh, yeah a, a dress made for you or mm-hmm. yeah, dress. Um. The first time you try it on, you had to go get the wig at the gym. Yeah, Let's do the gym first. The gym's the a gym. shorter thing to talk about. Yeah, so the, gym the gym is gym. the gym is my yeah. favorite part. Like anytime I've gone to any gym since playing that in high school, I've yeah. always thought of that. Hey, so here's what I wanted to ask you all. This is my my thing I've been thinking about all week. All right, mm-hmm. and I could be wrong, so I'm ready to just sit back and take everybody's opinion and just discard my own. I'm ready for it, right? Mm-hmm. And it could be just the way I read the gym, like when I when we do the side quest. I thought the gym held up very well for like in a, in like a social context mm-hmm. for the reason that they, they didn't necessarily play as a joke to me. I thought that I was like, okay, all these characters are doing their thing. They're who they are. And a bunch of masculine dudes are very, very cool with just calling each other cute. Yeah. <laughs> or they're, they're very like, Yo, Jojo. unless you work out, you'll never be as cute as beautiful, bro. And I was just like, that actually works out very well. Like, you know, I, I love I don't know. it too because they're so supportive of each other. Yeah. yeah. Is, is that, yeah, I was like, how do you all feel about that? So, uh, that's, yeah, I wanted to talk about that too because it's like, I feel like um, I, I was kind of expecting it to be like, a lot of it kind of feels like it was played up a little bit for laughs. Like, oh, mm. like Cloud, like a big tough guy like him wearing a dress. That's so weird, which like, yeah. isn't great just as itself. Like let yeah. people wear whatever they want to wear. Um but it's also the thing where, like, his friend is at the gym. His friend is, I think, big bro. And he's like, oh, you're just like my friend. Like, go and talk to him. So right. you go there. So, but, yeah, like, I, I I, was kind of dreading it. I was like, oh, this is really going to not be great. Like, yeah. they kind of uh, – it, it seems like they are a lot more accepting than, like, what I remember. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it was just, like, context of the times when I You know I what's it. funny is that I bet – at the time that it read a little bit more humorous in a way that like they maybe were kind of making it a joke but like 
I, I feel like in 2019, there's like this sincerity is okay now. Yeah. And, and like acceptance. the words that they're using are actually quite sincere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it actually plays better than they probably intended. Yeah. And yeah. we can't really say like what um, the, you know, the developers of the localization team or whoever wrote this plot that we're seeing, like we can't really say what their intentions were. Like it's kind of played up for laughs, but we don't know how much of that is like, necessarily like a homophobic kind of laugh that they're trying to go to right it's right. also like important to kind of look at the time when that was going on where it's right. like big movies in the 90s were like austin powers and mm. Ace ventura which like kind of that was a, a butt of the joke yeah. is like oh your mother is a man and all of that yeah mm. right. and just like if you go back and watch the first Ace ventura it's just like, yeah the, it... the punchline of the movie like the big like reveal of the movie is just like very transphobic and, yeah. Like, yeah so it's like it's hard to say like like you said i was actually surprised i was like oh that's not as bad as I remembered or was expecting it to be yeah. because it might have been that they were trying to like do that with this and make it funny, but it didn't really read that way. Like yeah. we're, we're, how about we just say we're going to read it as this is a very accepting yeah. group yeah. of people and they, well, do you have anything else to say? I was really just, I was going back on the whole, like how supportive, like all the gym bros are. It's like, they, they're not like dogging on each other or anything like that. And it, it, it is exactly how you said where it's like just, any like no matter no matter how you look at the context, they're actually kind of cool. Yeah. 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 And uh, and during which you play a squatting mini game, which is which amazing. Love it. It's so good. Yeah. You just have three buttons that you push to complete a squat, and you have to <laughs> do more just squats. like real life. Exactly. Exactly. I don't do squats. I, I, I do, assume I, that's how they're. I do do squats, and it's. I started taking Muay Thai, so I like the the first time I walked into this Muay Thai gym, <laughs> and I saw the just the the ring. I was just like. Oh, it's just like an FF7. <laughs> and, and we like, have to do squats. And every now and again, when you're already like in down position, you hit the wrong button and you just kind of stand up immediately and shrug and go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And <laughs> and uh, the, the opponent that you're squatting against does the same thing. Yeah. 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 So um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a weird timing. It's not as weird as like the button pressing mini game in the last episode. Yeah. I, I kind of noticed that if I hit like Y three times, B three times, and then A three times. You can kind of like, buffer it. Yeah, yeah I exactly. That too. But the, yeah, there's like, yeah, but. Yeah. Fun mini game. Um, did you did you beat it on your first try? Yes, okay. I've never lost. I've never lost the squat. Nice. That's, yeah. I did. I, I did it on my first try. Um, let's see here. So, uh, maybe w the I think the only other real place to talk about before we get to the Honey Bee we may as well just do them all. Then is the uh, the Materia Shop, which I only knew was called the Materia Shop because I looked it up online because yeah. I don't think you can buy a Materia there. Um, but it's the guy who asks you to buy something from the inn. And so you you walk oh, in yeah. and he goes, oh, hey, buddy, uh, you know, I kind of want to have a conversation with you. And he clearly is like a little bit uh, hesitant to talk to you because of Eris. Yeah. So she kind of goes, all right, fine. And kind of like her her puts her fingers in her ears. Mm -hmm. And uh, and he says, hey, I'm in competition with the inn owner. We had an argument and he won't let me in there anymore. I need to know what he's selling in the vending machine. So do me a solid. Go there. Spend the night and get whatever's in the vending machine. Right. And uh, what's great about this is that if you do it and you buy the most expensive one, you bring it back and he thanks you and he gives you another item, which I can't remember what the item was. I'm not, I completely forgot about that. I was yeah. like, ooh, I'm going to do Diamond this. Tierra is what he gives you. That makes sense, yeah. But what's great about it is that the item that you get plays different in the different translations, right? So we have a power drink set, right? It's like, oh, okay, and it, which, which makes sense, right? Like that's something you could buy in like a Japanese convenience store mm -hmm. or in one of their uh, vending machines, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I can't remember the exact specifics, but in Japanese, it's more like golden drink set. And the kanji is more like golden energy or like youthful energy, right? And so it's probably like a, uh, what would you call that? A, um, a piss drink? A wiener hardening oh, beverage. Oh, you're saying so like golden. A, a supplement yeah. sort of thing, like a liquid supp uh, supplement. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's probably something like that. Which, uh, interestingly enough, if I remember correctly, uh, testicles in Japanese is kintama, which is golden balls. And right. so you see like gold a lot when they're talking about like virility aids uh, and stuff like that. Probably like similar to like family jewels, I guess. Kind of yeah, 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 yeah. Huh. So did that, not know any. Yeah, a little interesting thing yeah. about that. Uh, but yeah, then we get to the honeybee in, and uh, I will let either of you. Take yeah, um, yeah, it's it's awful <laughs> for the most part. It's um, which to, and to I'm sorry to interject, no, but to be clear, it is also an an off. It's awful, but it's also an awful area yeah. too, right? So like, 
while a lot of it doesn't play very well, I, I don't want to say I give them leniency in a lot of ways, but like they're tr trying in some way to say like, this is crappy. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. So like, absolutely. They're, they're, I mean, it kind of just shows you how bad things are in the slums. Right. Right. But yeah, I just wanted to say that. And again, that's not yeah. my opinion of the whole thing or the right. defense or anything. I just wanted to throw that out there before anybody else, you know, yeah. listening to this podcast, but yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah, so, I mean, and the reason, uh, the, the note that I'm looking at here with why I'm just like, oh, yeah, this place is awful. is like one of the first things that I think someone says to you is that uh, it's customary for all new girls to be taken to the Don's mansion. Yeah. And it's like, so you kind of get an idea of what this inn actually is. Right, right. Yeah, which, I mean, you can see the, uh, the symbols on the doorway, the little two flaps are the symbols for woman. Okay, right? yeah. And so it's pretty glaringly like, hey, this is the gentleman's club. This is the place where we have a bunch of women here, yeah, right? And yeah, that disturbing line of like, before they can even work here, they have to go to the Don, yeah. right? And like, that implies some other uh, seedy behavior. Yeah, right? exactly. And it's like, it's not, it, it's, yeah. Yeah. Um, which, you know, it's something I wanted to talk about this time. I don't think we brought it up last time is Johnny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's this like kind of recurring NPC. I don't remember if we mentioned him last we week. We didn't, and I couldn't believe that we forgot because but else, yeah, yeah, outside of uh, Seventh Heaven, Tifa's bar, uh, yeah. it's like a small like family's house, and they keep talking about their son that they miss and everything. And, yeah, and uh, like it's, I think you got to like kind of read into it, but it ends up that that's Johnny, and then mm -hmm. you kind of hear about him on your way to the slums. And yeah, everything. he's and, somebody having adventures. Like while you're having adventures, but your adventures never really coincide. You just every now and again run into him. Until now. Until now. So he's outside in line at the Honeybee Inn. Right, having some cold feet about it. Yeah, and he's like not sure if he wants to go in to this like brothel, and he's yeah. he's like, oh, I don't know if I want to do it, and he asks for your advice. Yeah, and he yeah. says like, oh, like are uh, are oh, you here for that? Like he, as well? he recognizes you, and he's like, oh, are you here for that? Yeah. And you can you can say that like, yeah, you're here for that, or you can say I'm not gonna get brought down to your level like don't bring me down to your level right there really should be a third option like uh here for what oh yeah, yeah like you don't know yeah <laughs> trying to play it off you've never seen me yeah <laughs> yeah right and right if you if you say like yeah i'm here to do that he's like wow really like you brought a girl here <laughs> you're gonna be going to this place and also like your tifa's childhood friend like what kind of guy are you right right kind of just underscores you know like the seediness of this place right right um so you do get to go in. Mm -hmm. um, there's a guy outside who has a uh, a card, a membership card, and yeah. he can't decide if he wants to use it or not. So he just gives it to you, and he goes, "I can't deal with this pressure. You just you do it." And so um, I guess you, that's one good thing too is that it's like every every guy here is like kind of like pervy and yeah. kind of weird, and except stuff. for the the dude kicking the walls. Yeah, the crust punk. The crust punk. It's the same <laughs> model as the guy on the train, <laughs> yeah, but um, right. Yeah, he's he's yeah. Yeah, he's just angry that he can't get in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So um, so he's allowed to go in. Eris waits outside. Um, and <laughs> Eris waits outside and every guy there starts like moving. Immediately so starts talking to it's her. It's hard to get a read on these guys because they're so like, they see a girl and they're like, they're like the cartoon wolf that has yeah. like the eyes jump yeah. out and his, his yeah. like tongue like flailing Which and stuff. we'll come back to that scene once Wooga, we Wooga. leave the honeybee yeah, yeah. and to a pretty hilarious conclusion. Yeah, a great, uh, yeah. A great yeah, movie. yeah. But, but yeah, but yeah. they're also like very sheepish about going into this brothel and everything. Right. So you, so you go in um, and in this place, all the the women there are dressed as bees. Mm -hmm. They'll have like bee outfits very on. Bee very bee themed. They Very bee themed. Yeah. And one immediately comes up to you and goes, oh, hey, you know, choose one of the rooms that you want to use. And with, it's funny that every time you talk to any of the girls working there, they always have a line for you mm -hmm. and then a line they've spoken back to themselves, like kind of like either a thought or something that they're yeah, like kind of like saying under their breath. Mm -hmm. And it's always like, oh, these guys are such freaks. Oh, they're so moody every time. You know? I, mm -hmm. I think my favorite one uh she says, uh, oh, God, here's another one of those guys. You know, the delicate type. Just yeah, ignore him. Just yeah, ignore him. Yeah. Um, so she says, oh, I, I guess he doesn't realize his position. I feel sorry for him. So that's a, that, I would say that that's actually a good thing that these these girls working here are mm. very like they seem like pretty empowered. Like they're like, oh, God, it's another one of these like men and stuff. But, yeah, at least at least they're uh cognitively in charge of yeah you know what i mean exactly. like I, like we I, don't know this we can't really say what the circumstances right we know the circumstances that tief is here right. sort of so like i would say it's still out. probably not good since the don's in control of it anyway. absolutely that's yeah. the thing like like 
like nothing wrong with sex work. Like I'm going to say that I don't, I don't speak for everyone, but like, no, you, you speak for everybody here. Yeah. 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 Like, we're, we're, yeah. yeah. like, like we're going to go that, ahead and make that, that, We'll plant that flag on this podcast early. Yeah. yeah. Like we, no, no shame to like sex workers or anything like that. Unless right. you're like Don Corneo or Corneo or whatever. It is. Right. Like, who's right. A massive who is piece just, of shit. Well, who is just profiting off of yeah. it and he, nothing else. Yeah. He is, like, he's not actually performing sex work. He's yeah. just profiting off of it. Yeah, he's the work. pimp. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. So, um, one of my favorite things is you get the option of these four rooms, but only two of them are open. Right. So I would love to talk about these closed rooms. Let's talk about the less hilarious one okay. first, which is just two elderly people mm -hmm. whose son has bought them a night in this hotel. It was like, hey, you know, y'all are old, you're never alone. Here, I bought you a night in the Honey Bee Inn. Just enjoy this hot tub and room, yeah. right? And it's funny because they're talking to each other and kind of reminiscing about that and just being like, that's not really for us. I'm not really comfortable in this place. This is kind of weird. <laughs> What's funny, too, is they call it the big city. Yeah, yeah. They're like, we feel bad our, our son got us this in the big city, but, like, yeah, they're yeah. not into it. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever done this before. I think I just kind of, like, always rushed through this part to get to the next part. Yeah. And I had, I don't remember this at all. And when I got to the other room. I love the I other room so did, much. I wrote down, what the fuck? I love, yo, I, my favorite line. Okay, hold on. Let me, okay. <clears throat> So, just so you know, Cloud is looking through the peephole of these rooms mm -hmm. to get a little more context. He's He walks up to the room and says he hears something and you can choose to look through the peephole. That's how he sees the elderly people just sitting there talking and having that conversation. And so you go to the other room, you look through the peephole and you can hear and see what's going on in this room. And yo, what the fuck is happening in this room? I honestly don't know. What the fuck is know. happening I, in this room? Can I say one of the lines yeah. out loud that happens from this line? Yes, I, I know the one you're going to say. Okay, it's the curse of the resurrected Satan, our beloved queen does not awaken. <laughs> so not only is Texas and Korea is real, or are real, the Christian devil <laughs> is also canon. Final Fantasy so, Seven. <laughs> uh, so is there, an, I mean, like, I, I haven't seen this scene for a while, so if you can remind me, is it more like, a, like are they practicing a play? Are it they... looks like they are doing, like, like a play ritual. Okay. Yeah. Because... The the person playing the king is President Shinra. Yep. Yep. This is what President oh, Shinra is doing for fun in his free time. And you get to hear the managers with him discussing it. And they're discussing it like it's strictly business. They're just like, like, uh, I'm so disgusted with the president. This happens every time we come to Midgar on, yeah. <laughs> on business yeah. and stuff. So they're like, so at first I was like, is there like a ritual happening here and stuff but then like <clears throat> it's, it's clear that it's just kind of like this is how president shinra gets his kicks and he's right. just a weird he dude. gets his kicks by dressing up as a king and mm -hmm. having somebody laying on the bed acting like they're sleeping i assume that they're acting like they're sleeping and yeah. nothing else more nefarious yeah i, I, I mean he probably could ritually I mean, have kill you seen this man <laughs> yeah. yeah and it just says the wildest shit yeah and it's it's it's, it's it's nice because you got like the peephole thing that you're looking through, yeah. and, and there's like a red um, like, yeah. filter over everything, yeah. And it's playing like a really weird song from later on in the soundtrack. It's the one where there's there's a part where you stay at another hotel that's like a haunted house theme, and yeah. It's just this spooky song, that's right? Playing. Right. It it's so fucked up, but I yeah. love it. I love that they put that in there, and like. It's hilarious, actually, right? I, like, it's actually very funny, I think. Yeah, it, it's very funny, but I think there's also some details in it that um, are, like, significant to the plot. Oh, uh, tell me. So, um, he says, a legend has been passed on through generations. They oh, sought that's the right. promised that's land. that's right. Yeah, mm. so he's talking about the promised land, which I think is the first mention of this so far in the game. One with blue eyes and a great white sword on his back. Oh. Will, will not lead us to the promised land. So... Like ah. so, yeah. I I don't know what to make of this other than I, I get. Does Severoth have blue eyes? No, nope, green. Remember. Green eyes. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's got the Mako eyes. Yeah. Mako, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do you say M A K O? Ollie? I used to say Mako. I I'm going with Mako at this point. Yeah. Which I is did. weird because I refuse to say Aerith. <laughs> <laughs> I said oh, man, I said Mako here. last episode, and now I'm trying to say Mako. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, we'll be inconsistent with it. <laughs> right. I feel like the plot of this as, game is in, 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 yeah, inconsistent. Yeah. So we yeah, as long as we're fun. consistently inconsistent, exactly. nobody can point out the way we say something because we say it every way. Mm. Um. So yeah, I think that's. Uh, oh no, we. Um, no, we so haven't actually done go, what you do here. Yeah, so there's the two rooms that you can go to. Right. One of them I think is called the fuck room. 
It, uh, it's uh, the love room. Okay. In in in, in Japanese, what it okay. is is the love room, and when it when they brought it over here, it's the four random symbols signifying yeah. a swear word. Which room. I think is something that Barrett also always says. Yeah. But if it's love and like like love right. hotels in Japan are you know this. Right, like this, right. Like the honeybee. Fuck end. rooms. Yeah. So yeah. I think it, yeah, it's there supposed to be the- There were a few F-bombs in this game, weren't there? I don't remember. I think I, Sid says shit. There is a shit. shit. Okay. I, there's it's shit. Damn. It's like PG-13 rules. Yeah. Like, yeah. They get yeah. one fuck, but I don't think they actually say it. Yeah, right, right. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Yeah, so uh, which room did you choose? Because there's also, I think, the group room. Okay, so I chose group room. Okay, good. I, I chose the fuck room. Okay, so- can we do yours first? Because I'd like to spend at least just a minute on mine. Sure. I mean, uh, you kind of just walk in and it's like an empty room. I don't think there's really too much to say about it. But um, in the corner, like cowering is like a ghost of cloud. Yeah. So um, you go up to him and it's like the white dialogue again. It's, uh, and he's like, what are you doing in a place like this? And then he starts like freaking out. He's like grabbing his head and he's hearing that noise. again. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then it says, that's what I wanted to ask you. Should you be fooling around here? And, you know, just like kind of more back and forth. And then the ghost cloud stands up and picks up his buster sword and is about to like hit cloud with it and just gets like absorbed into cloud. Yeah. yeah. And then I think, um, and then someone says, oh no. And like the, the hostess who like brought you in. Yeah. You black out, right? Yeah. yeah. She, you black, the screen goes black. She says, oh no, she comes running in and yeah. And you find our new favorite character, Mookie. Yeah. Mookie. Uh, yeah. On top of Cloud, it looks like he's beating the crap out of him. I heard yeah. somebody else say it was a back massage or whatever. So or when it, yeah, when it starts out, um, you just hear a lot of like, oh, like back and forth. You don't know who's talking, but it's uh, like they're trying to. It sounds like they're trying to wake Cloud up, and it starts off right. with rub, 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 rub. Yeah, right. Thump, pound, thump, pound, poik, poik, squish, and then <laughs> wake up, and then uh, it it goes back to not being black anymore, and you're on the bed. And there's this big guy on you who's just wailing on you and yeah, just beating the heck the, the hell out of you. Mm -hmm. it, so I I did uh, look into a little bit of the translation here. I watched more of that uh, Let's Mosey show or whatever, and he kind of explained there that um, when <laughs> when when uh, Mookie, who's this this large mustachioed man mm -hmm. who works at the Honey Bee Inn, um, when he rolls off of you is which is hilarious because he gets into like a reclined position with his head behind his you know his hand yeah. behind his head and he winks at the camera instead of blinking like everybody <laughs> else does nice. um and he goes wait he says um you can't get nervous right yeah. and then uh and then the hostess is like oh there are adult things happening in here she says like you know oh there's the adult things going on yeah he, um, he also calls you bubby i think he does call you bubby <laughs> and um in the Japanese, what it would more accurate or, or what a more accurate translation would be of that is he goes, you know, don't get nervous because you're in a, this like love hotel room that you're getting nervous and that's why you blacked out. And the oh, there's adult things happening is more like, don't worry about it. This happens to adults all the time. Mm -hmm. So like even though you came into this room, you know, you couldn't handle the pressure. You couldn't perform sexually and you blacked out. Yeah. And like, don't worry about it. That happens to adults, yeah. you know, and that, that's kind of what they're implying there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's kind of in, in the same realm of what we were talking about, where it's like, I, I was like kind of worried like, oh, this won't like age particularly well and stuff. But it's, I think it's kind of all how you look at it. And yeah. like you were saying earlier, Ollie, like it's kind of just like everyone seems pretty okay and, and open with all of this. So it's like, Oh, okay. So right, it's right. not being played up for like a, a homophobic laugh necessarily. Yeah. Right. Um, so the group room, so the group room is what I picked. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you, do you know what happens I in the group can't room? Remember. Oh my gosh. Okay. So you go into the group room, uh, and the hostess says, um, so you must not like being alone. Is that right? And you have some options of like, I've always been alone or like, you know, like, that's right. Um, mustache dudes in, in these like skin tight suits. Right. And they all come I mean, in and like, they're like, uh, uh, what's the singlets and stuff? Singlets. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, some of them are in like trunks. Some of them are, but it's a uh, Mookie is again, the one who's leading it. Right. And, uh, they come in and they're like, Hey Bubby, how's it going? We're going to, we're going to have some fun time. You know, you and I, and cloud goes, Oh, what have I gotten myself into? And, uh, you can choose to like make a break for it or just like, no, this is to save Tifa. And so I picked, no, this is to save yeah. Tifa. And the camera pans up 
just far enough that you can just see the tops of everybody's heads so you can't see their body and you get the feeling that they're all like undressing cloud and so they're like and and as soon as they like undress them someone says "Ooh, we look at that <laughs> and, oh. and so i assume they're taking a look at, at cloud's sausages the ding, the ding dong his ding dong his packaged meats and um so so would you say that this could be translated as impressed or like oh mm. i don't know i hold on, i i think i wrote it down that it was like a wow if i remember which i think wow would be oh yeah sorry yeah they said wow would you look at that is how they say it okay. and so like it's I either it sounds, they're trying to flatter him or uh, yeah yeah who knows um and in my notes i spelled penis pepsi because that's how i I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna Pepsi. I'm gonna consult Deviant Art and see, see <laughs> yeah we'll uh, see what it says. see what how how well endowed yeah that is. surely they must know <laughs> so they put the experts at, down at uh, Deviant Art probably yeah. know so they put them in the hot tub and then the screen comes back down and the hot tub is small like it's it's only like a fourth of the screen but all ten dudes and Cloud are all in it at the same time and the Cloud is like mostly submerged and they're like oh Bubby don't be so tense Bubby and they start giving him a rub down right and so Cloud starts counting backward from ten and he's like all right after ten I'm gonna get out of this hot tub right and then like you have an interesting like it's kind of minor but like a little back and forth between Mookie and Cloud where he's like hey you know you're like less than half of my age you know like you you should like get out and do things you should you know you should enjoy the world and he goes you know what? i actually have like a youth club that i'm part of if you want to join it oh, that's awesome. and like at first it, it it could be taken as kind of like oh do you want to join the you know mookie's adult right, right. club for baby boys or whatever but um we're gonna I'd, take it the other way yeah well what i'd heard somebody say is that in the japanese that it wouldn't be so weird that it yeah. would be kind of like a youth club because mm, that's like yeah. a thing i was also gonna bring up it all depends on context again because in japan like m like bathhouses for men or like same-sex bathhouses are completely normal like it's, right. it's, it's just it's a, thing. a different it's, context yeah. than what we use here yeah, yeah it's yeah. like here i mean i feel like just america as a country is just kind of so homophobic just like yeah. culturally that like something like that even something like where people are like oh like you can't even call me cute versus the the big guys in the gym who are like oh big bro you're the cutest like i want to be cute like big bro i well, got yo i where i not not to name the place that i work at but i remember someone someone time saying like yo if you say another man's shoes look good then you are gay yeah and i was like first of all i can tell you like the brands of everybody's shoes in this place and i am incredibly heterosexual but like there's nothing gay about being like yo yeah those I mean, shoes look great you know how you look good you know how you learn how to look good See other men who look good, and you learn how to dress like them. Yeah, and what's wrong with that? How how recent was this? Like a couple weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> See, and I think like, that's the thing. Like, I I remember being really worried about like having to talk about this episode just because like you know like I'm a heterosexual guy. Like I have no right. like, real like like expertise to talk about like this sort of stuff and if mm. it, if it's bad or good or whatever. But like. I think it's just a context thing. I think like in Japan, this might not have been like we're we were seeing it like when I played it in high school, I might have saw this as like, a, you know, playing it up for laughs because of things like uh, Ace Ventura or, or uh, right. Awesome Powers and that sort of thing where it's like that was always the 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 punchline of a joke was just mm. kind of homophobic or transphobic and stuff. But right. in Japan, I don't think it's it might not have been written that way. And maybe, you know, we I might have saw it that way because of just. The, you know when i was in high school the same sort of thing like you yeah. weren't allowed to be like oh you look really good today it's well, like what are you gay like yeah well, i was kind of curious what was your take on this ollie um well i mean i, I am gay uh gay cis male um <laughs> i like i agree with you like it's it's all context and i was gonna say earlier that it's not even just a homophobic thing but like just the fact that this country is way more sexually rep uh, repressed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are some weird oddities as far as like how Japan, from what I understand, treats homosexuality, but overall it's not been as big of a deal as it ever was here. Mm. Yeah. Um, for the most part, like, I mean, it's been a long time since I've seen the honey be, uh, be in for myself, but I, I think a lot of it is like slight humor, but you can take it pretty well. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. it's not the worst in the world. It's not like it, it, I was I was expecting it to be a lot worse than it actually ended up being. Like, yeah, me too. So. Me too. I, I, yeah, like you said, I think it just comes down to context. So we're uh, we're over an hour at this Ooh. point. So let's let's start rocking and rolling. Pick it up. Let's do it. Are you good? Do you want to say anything else about the honeybee? In? No. No. All I right. Think, I think. 
Yeah. Cool. So let's go ahead and just say that once we've collected all of the gear, uh, we take it back to the the dress shop, and Cloud gets suited up. Mm -hmm. And so Cloud is in a, a purple dress. Um, and what I love is that for a little while in the game, Eris calls Cloud Miss Cloud, yeah. like in my SS Cloud, and she goes, "Oh, you you must walk more uh, ladylike, ladylike, Miss Cloud." I just <laughs> and it's just this more like Miss Daisy, like that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. But mm -hmm. I love that, like I can just tell that she's like taking the piss out of him, and like because you know, get a big tough soldier man, right? Yeah. The bodyguard and everything, and she's just like, "Oh, Miss Cloud, you look so lovely. You you must walk more feminine, like you know, and like and he's just like, Ugh, you know, yeah, and, <laughs> and like Cloud seems like embarrassed, but he's still doing it and stuff, and yeah, he, and he's not like doing it begrudgingly necessarily like that. right he knows that he needs to to get in and save Tifa and too. also he's in this nice community of very accepting you know like beefy soldier <laughs> guys that, which is like I, which is why I brought it up earlier when the guy who makes the dress is like oh a big tough guy like you like you are surrounded by a bunch of big tough guys who look a lot bigger and tougher than Cloud who are like all about this yeah mm -hmm. right so right like, it shouldn't be that shocking that's true that's true <laughs> I didn't think about that um uh, there, there was one thing that I wanted to take note of and it's hmm. like you go through this whole mission to get a wig and when you see him change <laughs> all he has is <laughs> pigtails. It's, just big tails. it's the same hair <laughs> so like it leads me to believe that like actually cloud's hair is a skeletal structure so <laughs> it's not actually hair it's, it's just really like just a large bony growth like <laughs> yeah <laughs> and he, the wig is actually just the pigtails that he mm. attaches to the back of his very odd spiky enormous skull mm -hmm. so if that's the case how does he attach the pigtails are they like glued on it's like sticky tack yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to wait till the remake when it's in more <laughs> right. high definition yeah, high I guess. definition yeah um <laughs> yeah i mean the other thing uh uh, Aerith sees Cloud and sees him in his dress and she's like, oh, you know what? I want one too. Yep. And there's a bit of back and forth where the, the father and the daughter at the dress shop are mm -hmm. disagreeing with, you know, like what choice they yeah. want, would work best with Aerith. Yep. And she's like, no, I want this one. And she picks that and they're like, wow, really? And she picks a red dress and yeah. changes her hairstyle too. And then you're ready to go uh, beat the shit out of the Don, hopefully. Yep, yep. Can I... I know we do this all the time, but can I yeah. rewind just a hair? Absolutely. One thing we didn't finish is as sure. soon as you walk out of the Honey Bee Inn and you see oh, Eris, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said we were going to come back and yeah, talk about yeah, yeah. it, and we didn't do it. You walk out of the Honey Bee Inn, and Eris is still surrounded by all these guys, and as soon as you approach, they all scatter. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have to talk to them or anything. They just see you walking up, and they all scatter to the different corners. And if you go talk to them, they're all like, hey, Eris is nice. But I can't believe she charges 500 gil for a single flower. And when it's like, oh, I got a flower from Eris, but it was 300 gil. Yep. Yeah. And then if you talk to Johnny, mm -hmm. he goes, she was very nice and sold me one for one gil. She's a really good person. <laughs> and like, or I, I wrote it down because what he says is he's like, oh, that uh, Aerith is really nice. She, uh, she gave me this beautiful flower and also one gil. So I think oh, she might have oh. like gotten 800 gil off the other guys. And the one guy's like. Oh, I can't believe I spent 500 gil on a flower, but at least I got her name. So she was like, yeah, I can give you a flower. And he's like, oh, what's your name? And she's like, oh, it's going to cost you. Mm -hmm. That's what I got from okay, it. But right, I think yeah. she might have just given that gil to uh, Johnny. Johnny? <laughs> Yeah, it makes sense. I we you know again like he's not a major character, but we had a little bit of a characterization of Johnny that like he seems to be decent yeah. at a least. Another interesting thing about Johnny too was um, there's outside of one of the shops in uh, in the Wall Market, there's like a guy who's trying to choose. It looks like clothes, like a clothes rack, and on there it's like hard to see because it's like kind of blurry. But yeah. there's like a black shirt or jacket that has like a skull with like red writing <laughs> yeah. under it. What it looks like, and if you uh, go into Johnny's room. Oh. Back in the thing, he's got like a shirt that looks very similar on the oh. wall. So it's like I think he, Johnny be, went and bought yeah, one bought of those shirts. Or, Interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're ready to save Tifa. But now we're going back to safety. Yes. So we go to Don Corneo's mansion. They let us in this time, uh, and he says, "Yeah, okay, the Don would love to meet with you." And then uh, the, the doorman also says something pretty gross too. Yeah. Let's see if I wrote it down here. I don't I think, think I wrote I think, it down. I think I took a screenshot of it. Um, he yeah. says something like. Oh man, there's you know three girls here tonight. May, what does he say? Maybe I'll get something. Ha 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 ha. Or something yeah, like that. something like uh, yeah. that. Yeah, it's, it's like oh maybe I'll great. look out. Yeah, it's not great. So you get the idea that like oh Don Corneo is going to pick one of these girls to do something. Mm -hmm. And then I wonder he's, what it is. I wonder what it is. Yeah. And then the doorman's like oh man that'll be great because all these girls are really good. So maybe I'll get something. And so yeah, it's pretty skeezy. Oh, another interesting thing that I took note of is uh, that guy who like 
that piece of shit guy who called Aerith a heifer. heifer yeah. Uh, if you talk to him when you're in the dress, he calls you a pretty lady. <laughs> and then, but he also follows it up by saying, "Oh, you can make a small fortune at the Don." So yeah, he's yeah. you know he's right. Maybe he's only saying like maybe he talks to to men differently than he yeah. talks to women. Like with a woman, like he wouldn't have called uh, Aerith uh, uh, heifer to her face, probably. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So we go in. Um. And the what would you call him? Like I guess the concierge yeah. at the at the desk <laughs> says like, "Oh, hey, you know, we're we're getting everything ready. Uh, I'm gonna go get the Don and." uh get this show on the road and as soon as everybody's gone from the lobby or as soon as the concierge leaves the lobby of don corneo's mansion eris says okay this is our chance to go look for tifa and find her yep. and so you run up some stairs and you run around and you go down into what looks like his fucking sex dungeon yeah. which has a goddamn iron maiden in it oh yeah is that what that uh, was is that what's it next to the fireplace i don't have text no that it. looks like yeah that that's what that looks like but yeah he's got all kinds of just <laughs> and so he just has a, a torture device that will just kill you yeah. Outright. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which I mean, hey. It just know. made me wonder, like looking around this room too, like I couldn't quite tell at first if it's torture or if it's kink. It, yeah. Like, like it, it or if it's both. Yeah. 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 Or if it's both. Yeah. Yeah. Um I was thinking the same thing. It could just be like a, a BDSM thing. I, I That's what I assumed. It I was, was just inclined to think that it might be a torture area just because of how shitty Oh, know, that's true. Don is. I but assumed again, it was like a, that's I'm not gonna kink yeah. shame. Like, yeah. I assumed it was a BDSM area. Yeah. But I guess though, since the Don is the type of person he is, He's he could absolutely use it for both. Yeah. yeah. So simultaneously or otherwise. Um but you do see Tifa down here, mm -hmm. and as soon as Cloud gets close to her, he runs away and hides his and he, face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um uh Eris comes up to her and he goes, oh, hey, are you Tifa? And, you know, she turns around and says, like, yeah, that's, you know, that's who I am. Um, and says, oh, you were the one with Cloud in the park. Yeah. So she actually saw Eris in a Cloud sitting on that cat slide. slide. Yeah. yeah. And um, Eris goes, what did she say? She says, oh, well, it's nothing. Yeah. You know, she says, oh, it's nothing. And Tifa says, well, what do you mean? It's, yeah, it's it's what do you mean nothing? And she's like, oh, you know, just, uh. Uh, I forget exactly what she says. Yeah, but so they they kind of go back and forth, and she's like, "Oh, I saw you with Cloud in the park," and she goes, "Oh, don't worry, we just met. It's nothing." And Tooth is like, yeah. "What do you mean? Just, don't worry, like, don't yeah. worry, like about what?" And and she's like, "Oh, don't misunderstand. Like Cloud and I just grew up together. Nothing more." Yeah, right. And then Eris says, "Oh, poor Cloud, happened to sit here and listen to us call him nothing." Yep. And the camera pans over to Cloud, and Tifa goes, "Wait, what do you mean?" Mm -hmm. And then you in control of Cloud go to talk to Tifa. And she is in disbelief, cannot believe, because that is she just noticed that you're the other girl there, yep, right? Exactly. <laughs> and so they have this comical little reunion, you know. And, and a nice little detail too is like um, when she's like, "Oh wait, why are you dressed like that? Like, what what are you doing here?" And then she's like, "Never mind, don't care. Like, what happened to you after that fall? Right, like, right. Are you hurt? Because the last time Tifa saw Cloud, she probably thought he was dead, right? Because he fell from yeah. the top of the plate, right? And so we we learn what." Tiff and Barrett have been up to since then mm -hmm. that Barrett caught someone, an informant, and um, was able to squeeze the name Don Corneo out. And so yeah. Don Corneo, in addition to being this like slumlord pimp, is also in leagues with Shinra. He's doing something for Shinra. Yep. We don't know what yet, but Tifa figured the best way to figure that out would be to get close to him. Yeah, to she get knew, him in, yeah. She knew that the Don was looking for a bride and she's like, okay, this is this I'm gonna go and get the information. Right, right. And so then she'd be able to get him while he's alone and also you know, force all the information out of him. Yeah. Um so while we're having this discussion, the concierge comes back and says, All right, it's time to line up. Uh we're gonna go meet the Don. Yeah. And so you walk upstairs and you get a, I guess not a mini game necessarily, yeah. but um, the culmination of like getting all of these key items, right? So but before that, there was a little. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, yeah, just to jump back again, um, there was a little bit of uh, back and forth that kind of just shows uh, how great uh, Aerith is, because um, I'm all about these parts. Yeah, because <laughs> so Tifa's like, oh, like I'm here because I I need the Don to pick me so I can get this information from him, and. Um, and then she's like, oh, there's three girls, and each night he has three girls and picks one of them. Right. And then Aerith is like, well, there's three girls here. And then right. Cloud's like, oh, well, I'm not going to put you in danger and yeah. all of that. And then Aerith's like, no, let's do this. Like, she's like, she's on board. She's oh, yeah, yeah, not yeah. afraid of and any she of this. She's like, Tifa no, we're going to. She trusts her too. She says, yeah. do you trust me? And, and she's, she's like, like yep. yes, I really appreciate you doing this. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so they're immediately and in. they just disregard Cloud, which is yeah, great too. Yeah, yeah. Cloud's like, no, 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 we're not doing that. And he's trying like, to be the quote, like again, kind of like not mansplainy, but something yeah. like that, where yeah. he's like, no, no, I'm in charge. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm the not man gonna here. let you all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm the man here. I'm gonna protect you all. And they're like, shut up. And like, they're they're like, like they don't give him a shut up. Yeah. They just ignore him. Yeah, they're just like, okay, we're doing this. Time to do it. Decide for themselves. Love it. So um, they take you upstairs, or they take the the crew upstairs, which now Tifa, Aris, and Cloud, and Cloud in a dress. And line him up before the Don. And we meet Don Corneo, who's a overweight man with a blonde mohawk <laughs> yep. and like a red like leisure suit and a white button down underneath it. Yep. And he's like, he's kind of hilarious looking like he's like, uh, wow, well, we like he's got very short legs, you know, like yeah. his like his <laughs> torso and up is like 90 percent of his yeah. character model, you know, and um immediately as soon as he sees the three girls or you know uh yeah and he he jumps up on his desk he like leaps out of his yeah. chair and like he's the like cartoon wolf again like yeah. the cartoon wolf and he's like all the way up on his desk and he's just like oh you know <laughs> like oh my gosh and he jumps over his desk and he stands in front of them and he's like Ooh, which girl am i gonna pick tonight and he mm -hmm. he tries to look at cloud in the face and every I've time loved this. it's so good <laughs> every time he tries to get close to cloud's face cloud looks the other way and then he'll move his head to the other side and cloud will look the other yeah. direction so he does one pass and then he goes back to cloud and it just goes a back and forth of like cloud not <laughs> looking him in the face yeah it's really good um but it does like a little eeny meeny miny mo thing yeah uh which i mean he already has it in mind but you know before he's standing in front of each character he's yeah. like who oh, is it going to be you or maybe it will be this one you know and then yeah they have the little back and forth and depending on how well you did it actually changes the outcome yeah of this can it be all three or, or not all three but can it be like it can be Eris, T4, okay. Cloud. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So who was uh, it in yours? I'm guessing Cloud. Cloud. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in mine, I got Aerith because I completely forgot about the uh, the Tiara. Okay. All right. My, well, my let's last, walk the, sorry. Uh, my last view was uh, Tifa. So oh, okay. Nice. So there we got all three. three. So let's do yours first. I assume that the two are similar. So why don't you talk through it, and then we'll see if the other one was similar. Yeah. So I mean. Um, uh, he says, like, shall we go, my pretty, and takes Aerith with him to his, the, the back of that room, and you're escorted into the other room where there's just a bunch of, like, just people who work there, I guess, like the Don's lackeys. Oh, I think that's actually exactly what they're called. Um, and th they're like, oh, like, we got guests. Like, don't worry, we're going we're gonna to take real good care of you. Um, and they say, this is all thanks to Don Corneo. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're all like, yeah. And then uh, Cloud kind of has a moment where he reveals himself. It's funny because someone goes up and th th they're talking about cloud and they're like, Oh yeah, you're in pretty good shape. Yeah. Look, <laughs> look at your tight little bod. And then they're like, wait, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's more like muscles. And then, um, Another thing a guy says that I took note of is that he's got ants in his pants. Want to <laughs> dance, got to take a chance and maybe find romance. That's amazing. Um, is, is that how it plays out too? And yours, all you hear. Um, so. Yes. Yeah, for the for the other room where yeah yeah, yeah that part is all there. That's that's awesome. So uh, basically, um, so someone also mentions that uh, Cloud has very pretty eyes, which going back yeah. to the eyes. Yeah. But uh, Cloud just jumps up on on the table and he's like, "Oh, like I, I'm not interested in this." And they're like, "Why not?" And he's like, "Um, I ain't interested in a bunch of scrubs like you." Yeah. yeah. I think that's why he calls it the Buster Sword because he's got no time for scrubs, yeah. also known as Busters. <laughs> um that's amazing so uh they're all like shocked that he's a man and of course they're just instantly like get him beat the fuck out of him right and then you just have to do like two waves of enemies that are called i think uh the uh corneo's lackey oh really and one of them's named it's Koch and scotch Koch uh, his, and scotch uh, yeah. yeah so you fight them they're nothing really to talk about with that fight but okay you beat them and then you make your way uh back to you and tifa make your way back to uh the don's room right so if cloud is the one chosen in the mini game, it immediately goes from there to the Don's bedroom. And um, <laughs> Cloud is standing at the foot of the bed and the Don is like on all fours aiming at Cloud. And the funniest thing is as you walk around the room, he just rotates to look at Cloud <laughs> no matter what. Like just That's like really doesn't move his arms or legs, but just like <laughs> pivots on a point to look right at you wherever you're going. And what I thought was hilarious is the Don, if you go behind his bed, he has a hyper back there that you can pick oh, up wow. and i was like yeah. a hyper is a thing that gets you all excited yeah mm -hmm. that's hilarious that they put one of those behind his that's bed that's really I good never thought about that yeah yeah i was like that's hilarious which uh 
you know, for people listening, what the hybrid does in in game, its function is to give you fury, which allows your limit break to build faster. Or if you have the sadness effect, which causes your limit break to build slower, it puts you back at normal. So yeah. what, interesting thing about sadness that I wanted to bring up too. Yeah. Uh, it also makes you take thirty percent less magic and physical. Uh, yeah. Damage, which yeah. is great because you're just like, like someone's just punching you, and if you're like sad, you're just like, oh, fuck it, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Which is funny is like. As soon as I can, usually in Final Fantasy VII, I give all three of my people fury and I just leave it on the whole game. Yeah. Because uh, to continue to learn limit breaks, you have to use them and yep. you have to beat enemies. And just having people go into limit break constantly is a good way to get those early. Yeah. So you do take a lot more damage. You take that extra 30%. Mm -hmm. um, but you get a lot stronger a lot quicker. And then when you have the limit breaks, you can take it off. Yeah. I think in uh, like the speed run strats, too, they, there's a lot of uh, giving your... Um, your party sadness to, to cut mm. down the, just because you're kind of under leveled in that. So you want all right. the defense you can get. So that's kind of a strategy. That makes well. sense. And they kind of have it optimized to where, you know, they're, they don't need limit breaks every other turn. Right. Right. So if, uh, so as cloud running around the room and you're still in the dress, you know, and Don Corneo is like, Oh baby, you know, come, come to daddy. And, uh, when you talk to him, he says like, Hey, do you, do you like me? And you get some options, right? And so I picked, like, of course I like you. And he goes, oh, you sure know how to make a man feel good or whatever. Why don't you come over here? And um, he asks, he goes, G give me, a, what do you think? Like, a kid? Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. And you can be like, all right, whatever. And, like, so I picked, like, yeah, sure, whatever. And so, like, Cloud, like, leans in to give him a kiss and then backs up real quick because he's, like, thinking about it. Like, what am I getting ready to do? Yeah. And then he leans back in and right, it, either they do or it's the second before they kiss each other, Tifa and Eris bust into the room, and they go, all right, Don, we've got you now. <laughs> and oh, immediately Cloud backs up, and one of them, I can't remember if it's Tifa or Eris, goes, were you just, you weren't really getting ready to, were you? <laughs> and Cloud just ignores it and <laughs> jumps down to the bottom of the bed and throws off his dress, and he has his full armor set, That's like awesome. with his shoulder pad and everything below it. And he goes, Don's like, oh, my, you're a man. Oh, my goodness. And I think they both situations play out as normal from there. Yeah. yeah. So I think another thing in in my like situation of it, uh, I think Aerith does that where she like jumps off the bed. It's the same sort of thing where he's he's trying to get her and she's like yeah. standoffish. And um, she jumps out of the bed and, and throws off her dress and is just wearing her normal clothes under that. Right. Which like I feel like it's a lot more jarring with Cloud because he's like, you know, got the shoulder pad and stuff. But I saw that. Yeah. And I was like. And she was like, aha. And it was just like, oh, a different dress. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, so he throws his off and he has like his full armor and yeah. everything underneath is pretty good. For Tifa, it's surprisingly straightforward because she doesn't really get that much time to try and like get any information out of him. So he automatically is just like, I can't wait anymore. He tries to hop her. But like, uh, what is it? Uh, oh, he well, says that to Aerith as well. Oh, yeah. uh, there was like, I don't know if he says it to Aerith, but like, uh, Tifa's like, oh, uh, there's actually one thing I wanted to talk about first, and he cuts her off, and it's like, oh, that? Oh, I'm single, don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, so I think there's a, a little bit different with that, with uh, Aerith, where um, right before um, she, like, reveals herself, it's the same sort of thing, where she's like, oh, well, uh, I have to ask you a question first, and, and he's yeah. like, oh, well, that, and he just thinks she's, like, a virgin, and she's like, oh, okay, well, I, I need to, he's like, don't worry, I'm gonna take you through it all step by step, and, stuff. and she's like, no, it's not that, like, again, like, yeah. subvert, like, she's definitely has this look to her, like, this look of innocence, which, like, is yeah. constantly being, like, you know, flipped on its ear. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so from there, uh, when Don Corneo finds out that he's been had, you know, they we start this little interrogation, right? Mm -hmm. Where uh, Cloud, Tiva, and Eris go up to the side of the bed, right? And so they're on standing on the side of the bed, and um, Tifa's the first one to ask the question, right? So she says, "What did your assistants find out?" Because mm -hmm. uh, going back to the the reason that they're there is Barrett caught one of his assistants, yeah. and found out about the link between Don Corneo and Shinra. Mm -hmm. So she says, "What is what did your assistants find out?" And if you don't tell us, and then Cloud puts his foot up on the bed and says, I'll chop it off. Mm -hmm. and, so, <laughs> and Doc and is like, oh, so my good. gosh. Yeah. And so he kind of like reels and he's like, oh, my, oh, no, oh, no. And um, so he starts giving up information. Yeah. Yeah. Which, if I remember right, this one is that uh, they wanted to find out where the man with the gun arm is. Yeah, right. That's correct. So, yes, yeah, so my assistants were looking for the man with the gun arm. That's what Shinra wanted to know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Tifa asks again, by who? Like, who asked you to find out where the man... And he says, I'm not going to tell you that. 
they'll kill me. Yeah, yeah. And then and then Eris puts her foot up on the bed and says, "If you don't tell us, I'll rip it off." <laughs> <laughs> it was so good. Um, and then he confesses that it was Heidegger of Shinra, who we haven't seen yet. No, this yeah. is the first mention of that name. Yeah. Uh, Tifa asks what uh, Shinra is up to, and is yep. if he doesn't tell them, she says. I'll smash it. Yeah, yeah, yep. And then he mentions the big bombshell where he says, um, "Yep, he's that Shinra's planning to uh, crush Sector Seven slums with the plate because he found out that the man with the gun arm and Avalanche's base is in the Sector Seven slums." So Shinra's just like, "Okay, well, we'll just bring down the Midgar gonna, plate on top of them." Yep. So just like we talked about last time, Midgar is this two se- section town with a large plate on top. And he says, we're just going to blow up the supports and bring it down on them and crush yep. and kill everybody crush there. Yep. yep. But it'll kill Avalanche. So they'll, yeah. Yeah. This type of stuff. Um, so of course they're like very surprised about this and the urgency kind of sets in immediately. Yeah. Like, Oh, there's a lot of lives on the line. Yeah. They're like, all of our friends are back there. We need to get back there and get everyone out ASAP. Right. So they start running out of the room and Don right. says, wait, yeah, yeah, wait, why, why do you think scum like me babble on about the truth? And then you get... You get a, a couple of, options here. Do you know? Do you, have do you remember which one uh, you went with? I do. Let me see, I have it here. So the uh, the three options that he gives you, that you get to respond to him is, uh, because I've given up on life, because I'm sure I'll win, or because I'm clueless. Right, what'd you pick? So I, I think I picked uh, because I've given up on life. I, really? I like knew the answer to pick, but I was like, yeah. that's a funny answer. I went ahead and picked the uh, because I'm sure I'll win. Yeah, which I is got the, that too. Yeah, yeah. which and, is the answer. Like and he's, he just says ding, ding, ding and pulls a rope and the three fall into a trap door. So yeah. what does he say if you He just says one? buzz, wrong. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> and um, same thing, pulls the lever and all three of them fall. Yeah, yeah. And then it cuts to a different scene. It does, different yeah. Different music. So this is the first time we've seen this room, mm-hmm. and we'll come back to here later. And this character. Yeah, yeah. And so we see Heidegger of Shinra mm-hmm. walking up some stairs into a large office. This is a real big office, um, sparsely populated with things yeah, for a large office. He doesn't way have too furniture. Big, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very futuristic. Looks like a like a spaceship kind of. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's, it's a very long walk animation. Oh my! So oh, yeah. the Switch version has the speed up function, oh, and I, use I absolutely it. use the speed up function. I use it, it constantly, but especially this is a. Dude, Heidegger takes his time mm-hmm. walking up to the desk. He's a, but he's, it's he's the, a rotund man. He's, yeah, he's yeah. got to take his time. But it's the desk of President Shinra. Yeah. Um, so yeah, interesting note about this conversation. They're just discussing their plans to destroy the Sector 7 slums. Um, but there's another character there. Yep. There's, uh, there's Heidegger. Uh, there's uh, President Shinra. And there's Reeve, who is, yes. I think, the first time we're seeing Reeve as well. Yes. And he's like, are we really going to do this? Are we really going to, like go this far just yeah. to kill a couple of people like yeah a, Reeves a few city, members Reeves city planning if i remember yeah, that's urban his yeah. development. urban development urban development department yep the executive. to uh, whereas uh heidegger is something uh like the the, the peace uh, yeah i think it's something with peace uh you know just a pretty name for war yeah it's like it, right. like the peacekeeper or something yeah let me say i think i have it here somewhere but yeah they're both um uh, the head of the peace pr- uh preservation peace go. preservation yeah yeah, which is yeah insanely fascist it kind of just like shows you more how like it's like yep. oh yeah we're we're keeping the peace yep like, yeah don't which, fuck with us side note i did watch a couple videos on the philosopher heidegger and i was like is heidegger in the game it, exemplary of the philosophy of heidegger and no not really (laughs) very different however martin heidegger was a nazi so so yeah (laughs) so yes in that way he doesn't like (laughs) yeah which uh yeah we could go all day talking about philosophy which we probably will after the podcast yep but for now doesn't necessarily fit the philosophy but absolutely fits the actual character of martin heidegger the philosopher um yeah so the the one guy uh reeve is uh, a little, he, he he's hesitant to want to do this and go this far. Right. He, he kind of seems like he's in over his head, and the president says like, "Oh, you, you seem tired. Like, take a vacation. Go." Like, yeah. I'd also like to point out that he purposely brings up his um, the fact that he is the head of urban development mm-hmm. for his reason for not wanting to do this, which I think is actually significant yeah. for something we'll find out about him. Much later, yeah. Uh, he he he's a character that we're gonna hear from right now in this scene, and then not a lot for a long time. Yeah. But he kind of per- very on purpose in front of Heidegger and in front of Shinra is like, I- I'm the head of urban development. 
I, I can't stand by something like this. This is against my job, right? And so that's his. That's how he frames his opposition to this. Yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, they also talk about the mayor, which yeah. is just a little one-off thing. And which just like, uh, can I? We'll actually meet the mayor next episode, but I just can't. I can't let it go. We have to talk about this right now. He said the mayor's against it. <laughs> yeah, he says the mayor's against it. <laughs> so the mayor voted no on destroying his uh, all of his constituents to take care of one terrorist yeah, group. Yeah, right, right. But Shinra doesn't give a shit. But the thing I want to talk about the, the mayor that we'll find out actually on the next episode, but I just want to say it now because it's just burning in my loins. The mayor's name is Domino and the city is shaped like a pizza. Oh. And his aide is named Hut. Oh, like okay. Pizza so it's Hutt. very yeah. pizza themed. That makes sense. <laughs> is that... Wait, a, it's mayor's aide in the English one, but in Japanese it's Hutto. And so... Okay. So it, that it's 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 Pizza Hut. Yeah, it's Domino's. The, sh the city is shaped like a pizza. <laughs> Both of those chains were in Japan in 1997. Nice. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's case closed. The case we closed. Cracked that one. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, President Shinra basically is just like, cool. This is perfect. We're gonna destroy Sector mm -hmm. Seven and report that Avalanche did it. So not only are they gonna kill Avalanche, but they're gonna say this was the work of that terrorist group. Right. Where, you know, like they're doing things like bad things for the right reasons. And they're just going to be like, oh, no, like the next step for this is like, oh, yeah, those guys that you thought were doing the right thing. No, they're just in it to their senseless violence. Right. They're just trying to kill as many people. And he as says possible. afterwards he's going to send Shinra in to help the people too. Yeah. To make yeah. Them, so, like, just yeah. disaster capitalism kind of thing being like, oh, this will make us look so good. And, right. You know, like Shinra's the good guys and yep. just let us keep bleeding this planet dry. Yep. yep. So then it switches to um, the sewers. Yes. Which uh, yeah, I, I'm. I was like, oh man, is this another long sequence? Because usually sewer sequences in games. Oh are my like god, the worst. We'll talk about it when we get to FF8. Yeah. Oh god, yeah, I forgot about it. Okay. I think that's what I was thinking of actually, and I was like, oh man, I don't remember. <laughs> but it's like it's it's very easy to get through the sewers. Oh yeah, there's it's, a couple it's items. Two screens. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. One one noteworthy item I think is uh, steel. The steel material. Steel. But before you get steel, the second you drop down into the sewers. We are presented with our third boss fight of the yep. game and our first non-mechanical boss fight. Yeah, so. it's just like kind of a straight up boss fight, right? Yeah. A, a little bit of a mechanical thing, but not really. Sure. Uh, it, it, um, well, I mean, in the way of like, it is not a machine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like the first one was the guard scorpion machine right. yeah. and then the oh, techno, the techno soldier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is the apps. Yeah. yeah. APS apps. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, was apps also or asp? I, thought it I was, think it's apps. I think it's oh, apps. Okay. I believe. Yeah, it's apps. Unless oh, yeah. unless autocorrect changed yeah. that for me, but yeah. I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's apps. Yeah. Um, and uh, its thing is that it is able to. I don't. Is it a? I don't know if it's a counter or if it's just every turn. But it hits you with. I think uh, it's just every turn. But there's yeah the sewer tsunami is what you're sewer talking tsunami. About. Yep. Yeah. And just that can do a lot of damage. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it does a lot of damage, but not just to your party. It actually does yeah. damage to it, so it's it's hurting itself. And the uh, what this thing looks like is it's kind of like a seahorse, like minotaur. Yeah, is the only way I can think. Yeah. He's got like you know like chain like he he was chained up at one point because he's got like gold like handcuffs on that are broken and stuff. Right. Um. So I think that this is a pretty tough boss fight. I think I had to use cure quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. I, the this time when I played it, it wasn't so bad for me because every time Aerith got hit, she pretty much limit breaked every time she oh, got hit yeah. with Sewer and, and, and Aerith's uh, limit break is healing wind, which just heals your party. Yep. Yep. At least that's the one she starts with. Yeah. 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 Which as you go through and you get her other ones, I found that like, oh man, I wish I just still had healing wind. That one was the best. Mm -hmm. I just want to go back to that one. Yep. Um, so yeah, so you beat, you beat apps. Uh, you go through two screens. Yeah. Um, you fight the Ninja Turtles. Uh, the Sahagin. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Muad'Dib. Yeah, they were just the uh, turtles and yeah, spears. Yeah, battle toads. Doesn't that same creature make an appearance in Castlevania? Pretty sure. I'm, yeah, they both pull from this like yeah. wide... Uh, it's pr it probably all comes from D&D, &D, honestly. D&D &D and I'm sure like other cultures. Or, yeah, or folklore. fantasy, yeah. Yeah. folklore, yeah. Um, but yeah, so you come up out of the sewer into the train graveyard, mm -hmm. um, which is... As it said, it is written on the tin. It is a graveyard for trains. Yeah, small uh, little puzzle here of just moving some trains. You just kind of go in and yep. push them. You, you can get some items. I think there's like a hidden high potion. Yeah, like and some barrels. Um, one real quick note, just for people who are playing along with us. Um, there's an enemy called the Eligor or Eli Gore. Mm -hmm. That's like a rock and roll man on a chariot yeah, or something. Very like he's cool. like a 
it's it's wild looking. I don't know how to describe it. Kind of looks like the Poe salesman from uh, Ocarina of Time. If people are familiar yeah. with that, like mm. he's got like a he's, he's like a cyclopean eye. He's like wearing like white cloaks with a hood and has just um, a, a red uh, dot for an eye. Yeah, and I think he does like an a, an eye laser or something. I forget. Yeah, that. he uh, does. Uh, yeah. uh, mono laser or something. Mono laser. Yeah, yeah, mono yeah. laser's name. Yeah, something like that. But you can steal the striking staff from him. Which is a weapon for Eris that has thirty-eight attack. I, I, yeah, I think uh, when I equipped it, it doubled Aerith's attack. Yeah, it, and it's got four materia slots. Yeah, there's nothing else in the game at this point that has that much damage, which yeah. is wild. Because again, it's, it goes to Aerith, who mm-hmm. is kind of like a. You would think she would be the healer. Uh, yeah, and she. I think she does kind of have starting stats of. She's or, got or they pretty, put her in the back row when they yeah. put you in, or put her in the party to yeah. kind of signify that like, hey, there's going to be somebody casting and yeah. you don't want them taking as much damage. But yeah, I mean, she gets a very good weapon and you can start dishing out damage with it yep. pretty fast. I, I did that by accident just because I was like, oh, I want to see what everything has to steal and like stole some potions, stole some ethers, that kind of thing from the, yeah. the common enemies. And then I was like, oh, this thing's pretty cool. And I know like every time I tried it, it was like couldn't steal anything. Couldn't steal anything. Which is the Couldn't, telltale sign like, of something this has great. Something good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you get the striking staff, which is yep. highly recommended. Uh, so you, we get out of the train graveyard, and we are on the screen uh, that we walked out of the train on originally when we came to the Sector Seven slums for the first time in the game. And the train guard is standing beside the train, just as he was when we got out of the train. And he says he knows that the plate is going to fall he's like i've heard a rumor he heard a rumor that the plate was going to fall but he just can't bear to leave it he's like i've been working here forever uh this is the only here for so many years yeah i just can't bear to leave here yeah so he's he's going down with the ship he's he's ready to he he doesn't want to leave his post yeah and i think that like some like characterizations like that right now in the game is going to be important to having the uh emotional weight yeah of what's getting ready to happen right um so we walk up to the next screen and we are at the support post, right? This is where the Shinra guard dropped the R bomb yeah. last time. This is the same screen, mm-hmm. um, but it is it is where the support post is, and there's already fighting going on. Yeah, you hear you hear some some gun gunshots happening. You hear the the tense music playing again, and, and things are things are going down. Uh, it's, it's small minor characterizations of the NPCs here. There's another guard yeah. who's like, "Oh man, I was like, I'm so done with this shit. Like, I'm quitting tomorrow." And yeah. another guy, the, basically, they're just like, "Oh, we're just doing our jobs, and this is what is happening now." Right. Um, so, it has a, a, a shot that pans all the way up to the top, and I think yeah. you see some fighting going on. You, you do, see Barrett yeah. fighting up there, and then you see Wedge. We see Wedge uh, fall from the top. All of, the way from mm-hmm. the top. Yeah. And, yeah. And. Yep, it's it's pretty sad. And then he lands, and luckily he's not dead. Um, and you can yeah. go up to him and talk to him, and, he, and you go, "Wedge, are you all right?" And he's just happy that Cloud remembered his name. Right. And then he also <laughs> right. he also has to apologize that he uh, he couldn't do anything. He's like, "Barrett's up top. You got to help him." Um, like, I'm sorry that I like let you down. Right. So right. like, true to his character, he just kind of you know he he idolizes Cloud. He wants to be a big hero to save the planet, but he also doesn't really have a lot of confidence and he's he's right. he's taking it pretty hard that this is happening and he, he's kind of right. thinking it's like you know oh i let everyone down sorry this happened right so cloud and tifa ask eris hey will you take care of him mm-hmm. while we go up there we're gonna go up there and fight with barrett take care of him yeah and, and tifa asks another favor of yes Aerith, where she says uh i have a bar called seventh heaven in this neighborhood there's a little girl named marlene there like you gotta get her out yeah yeah because who knows what could happen we may not be able to stop the plate from breaking and mm-hmm. everything from being ruined yeah. go get marlene and Eris says she's gonna do that she'll she'll put her somewhere safe yep yep and um so then you begin your your climb and starting at base level uh at that point when everybody's ready there's a guy who is a shopkeeper you can buy some items from yep. <laughs> and there's a soldier talking to this girl on the yeah. side and i love this interaction where um he goes Oh, he's like, yeah, baby, you know, this is, I deal with stuff like this all the time. This is my bread and butter. I'm just going to hang out right here. And the lady says, I just love a men with a sense of duty. Just let me stay here with you. Yeah. <laughs> and so he's using this like awful scene as like time to yep. hit on this girl. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we start walking up and the first person that we see is doubled over the rail um, and it's Biggs. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. And so we see Biggs, and Biggs says, like, oh, Cloud, you came, you know. Like, I thought you didn't care about the I thought the you didn't care. You really do care about the planet, don't you? And you have some options. Yeah, you so. can say, nope, not interested. Or you can say, you're wounded, dot, 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 dot. Right, right. And so I went with you're wounded. You can say both. So yeah. I just said one and then the oh, other Oh, yeah, one. I think I did do both, actually. But, but the, I, yeah. Um, 
he's he's basically just like thanks and like there's a moment of him being like oh cloud actually does care about us right and if you say the other one he's just like oh cloud you just don't get it or something like that. <laughs> he, like, he just kind of piss him off yeah um, um so he tells you barrett's fighting up there which we already know and so you run up and um let's see is there anyone else that we see we see jesse yeah so we talked a lot about jesse on the last episode mm -hmm. and we see her on the stairs and it's assumed that she's wounded i can't really see her yeah. model very well like what's going on with her actual character model right but um she says you know we're probably getting what we deserve like because yeah, of our like, actions we... a lot of people died this is what we're getting because yeah. of it um and yeah, she says, I, I'm, I'm glad that I could talk with you one last time. And right. You can say, like, don't say last or is that so? Like, you can still be a dick yeah. to her. And what's funny is that if I did say, is that so? And she yeah, goes. Yeah, because you can do both. I did yeah. The same and thing. she goes, oh, you're so cool. That's what I've always liked about yeah, you. She's like, oh, Mr. X soldier, like being so tough, even under these circumstances. And she's she's like, oh, I always liked that about you. So yeah. It's yeah. endearing. Like, it seems insufferable, like when I'm reading it. But <laughs> Je Jesse likes it. Right, right. But yeah, she says like because of our actions, that so many people have died that this is probably their punishment. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, so we get up to the top. Barrett's fighting. He's shooting at nothing. I mean, like <laughs> graphically, he's shooting at nothing. But he tells you, "Be careful! They're attacking from a helicopter." Yeah, and so. uh, it gives you a moment to just open up your menu and, and it, equip Barrett it for stops the fight. And says, which is, it says, "Let's stop here and equip real quick." Which yeah. I can't remember if it does that in the original. I'm assuming it probably does. I think so. But, yeah, um, I remember I so. Final Fantasy games didn't always. Uh, project that very well I mean, yeah, it's very frustrating no. when you get <laughs> yeah. into, the, into a battle yeah um another thing is the random encounters here are these ridiculous like I helicopter to say it or not yeah helicopter yeah. soldiers who like after a while just like fall to the ground and become like normal soldiers yeah that was <laughs> they're, they're like hilarious. literally spinning a propeller blade in their <laughs> hand to stay up in the air it's yep. wild these dudes have incredible forearm strength <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they're called arrow combatants <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so we get all geared up and um the Turk from earlier that we met yep. in the church comes down Reno, Reno and he says, once I press this button, it's too late. Yep. Right. And like, I was like, what kind of, what kind of pillar it's the plate that drop button, you know? Yeah. This, 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 every floating this pillar city that the keeps this, that. this floating city up just has a pillar that one button <laughs> can, can set an explosion on it and destroy the whole thing and kill everybody beneath it. Like, like, I didn't get the sense that there were people here before. There's no Turk here earlier, I don't yeah. think. But he just comes down and goes, oh, yeah, I'm just going to press this one button. Yeah, let me just hit That's this button. That's the self-destruct button, and now no one can go back on it, which is also crazy that he hits it and say, oh, that, there's no way you can go back now. There's no disarming this bomb. He's just one button. He, he literally yeah. says, That's yeah. all, folks. Yeah, yeah. And then we get into a fight with him. Yeah. And we have our fourth boss. Get to is, see his ponytail or rat tail. Yeah, kind of looks right? like a rat. It's he a seems rat like tail. a rat tail. He seems like yeah. the type of dude who would have a rat tail. It does, yeah. Um, and he's kind of an interesting boss because he also has another mechanic. Yeah, right? yeah. He he casts uh, the 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 pyramid magic. Pyramid, on you. Yeah. yeah. Which is just a uh, it prevents you from attacking. Like your meter still fills up, so you yep. can't attack. But you you can't attack while it's there. Um, but if you, uh, I, it only took one attack from one of my party members on whoever was in the pyramid to break the pyramid. I thought it was just an attack. I don't. It could be a certain HP. I just assumed it was an yeah. attack, no matter what. That, yeah, that would make sense. I but mean, yeah, it was, you I, I wasn't pyramid, doing a lot of damage. So right. Yeah, and if you attack that, the pyramid goes away. And you it's funny too because he's so cocky about it. He casts yeah, it and he says, "Try and break it if you can." I know. I know. Like, yeah, I, Which I, the, the first I tried time I played, and instantly did it. <laughs> the first time I played, I didn't get that that I was supposed to attack the pyramids either. So I just got everybody pyramid. Uh, yeah, I remember it well. took me a minute. I think yeah. it was the same fight, like my first fight, but I yeah. think it still if, took a while. If everyone gets pyramided, does that like like does that result in a game over? I or? don't know. I, I think I, it would it either way though, because you just couldn't do anything. But it might time out. It also yeah. Might. You know, and then he can probably just keep attacking you, but I don't know. Yeah. It's like, uh, I remember Petrify in some of the other Final Fantasy yeah. games. If you have all three of your party mm. members, like Petrify, it game, over. game over. But yeah. I don't know. It could be that I didn't get that far because I'm a right. great gamer. <laughs> so, um, and he's also got an Electro Magrod. The Electro Magrod. Yeah. He has like this like taser on the end of a stick yep. that he keeps poking. I want to say around. I wanted that weapon as a kid. Oh, <laughs> it, yeah. is dope. it is dope. It is cool. Uh, yeah. Just yeah. Other than that, normal fight. You can't yeah. steal anything from him. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, he activated a time bomb. He escapes on a helicopter, which Shinra loves to do, obviously. Right, right. Um, oh no, 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 wait, he doesn't. So a helicopter comes up and there's another member of the Turks there. That's right. Uh. That's right. And he's got someone with him and he said, and 
Barrett's just instantly like, oh, like starts shooting at them, and he says like, oh, you don't want to do that. Our like, guest, yeah, yeah you, you, our, our special guest. Yeah, and it's Eris. Right, right. Uh, yeah. So he has. So Sa- the the Turk Sang has Eris on the helicopter with him, and um, this is where we kind of hear. I don't think it's necessarily the very first time, but we get a little more dis- uh We get a little more uh, talk about the ancients. Yeah, and th- I think this is where they say that Eris is an ancient. In fact, I, th- right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which uh, Shinra is looking for, right? He Shinra. says, uh, yeah, our orders were to find and catch the last remaining ancient. Right, so right. So now we kind of get an idea of why the Turks have been after Eris. They mentioned the ancients before. Yeah. We didn't know what it meant. And now it's kind of just like, oh, Eris is the last remaining ancient. Right. Or they think she is. Or, you know, that's that's all we got to go on so far. Right, right. Because Cloud's like, what are you going to do with him? And he's like, oh, I haven't decided, but we th- these are our orders. Right, right. Um, and so before they fly away, because the... the the bomb is set now. Like mm-hmm. this pillar it's is happening. going to explode. Mm-hmm. So before they uh, fly away in the helicopter, she just really quick gets off. She's safe. Yep. She just says out loud, she's safe. Yep. Right. And then Sang Tifa, smacks her, which is yeah. like, yeah. But oh yeah. That, that sucks. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. yeah. He just, he, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, she does, she keeps it very vague and just, just says those words. Yeah. Right? And she, like, and she, she's and somewhere safe. I think after she gets hit, um, she says, uh, she says, hurry up and get out. So right, she's like, "Don't worry about me." Like, a she's safe, which Marlene, right? Um, yeah. which just guessing, <laughs> right, 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 because right. I haven't played this game before, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. So Sang says that it should be starting right about now, uh, and then I think that's that's. Was there anything else that goes on? Uh, well then. Uh, oh yeah, Barrett's like, "Oh look, we can use this wire to right. to get out." <laughs> so the the. Pillar starts to explode. Like, it is starting to explode. So, you know, uh, debris raining down. And everybody's running back and forth. Like, Cloud, Air, Air, I'm sorry, Cloud, Tifa, and Barrett are kind of running around looking for some way to get off. And Barrett finds this wire that's attached to the platform that there are. And they're probably... It's like construction uh, wire, it looks like. Yeah, I would yeah. say they're probably, like, at least halfway up the yeah. tower. So they're well into the air at this point. Yeah, yeah, it's construction wire. And he goes, oh, this is going to be a way out. And so he unhooks it and says, everybody get on. And everybody jumps on Barrett because Barrett's a huge motherfucker. And it's great. Cloud like gets on his shoulder. I know. Like, he's <laughs> like a little on kid. His, on one shoulder. I know. It's so good. And they they swing off as the pillar explodes yeah. and the plate comes down. So mm-hmm. Shinra does get, they, they do succeed in bringing the plate down on everybody. There's a and, great shot, too, of President Shinra just like looking out his window and just seeing the explosion. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we see a very, like, very distressing scene from inside one of the houses uh of sector seven mm-hmm. we see a shot from inside out the person's window and next to their window is a television yep and you see the anchor actually look up as soon as it's coming down that as well and, and like me. brace himself and yeah. brace himself and it's yeah. the anchor that we we saw him earlier in uh in the hideout where he was yeah. on the tv for yeah the sin or the like the shinra intelligence network yeah, yeah right, right information network who knows yeah i think um, people have theories about what sin is but it doesn't matter yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so they swing on out of there um, and they and they land in the uh, in the park that Cloud and Aerith were at. Right, right. And uh, that's that's where I stop. And you is see that right where you stop? The um, the the gate where Tifa and the Chocobo sex wagon or whatever you call it <laughs> came out. Um, it, where that came out uh, is now just all covered in debris. Like it's just the plate has fallen on top of it. It's completely blocked off. And Barrett just instantly runs up to it and shouts, "Marlene!" Right, right. And that's where I left it. All right, yeah, that's that's where I left off as well. Yeah, that good. That's good yeah, for everybody. That's pretty good. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys again for listening to our podcast. That this time we thought was going to be an hour long. We're like, we decided yeah. only to do Wall Market because I was like, yeah, oh, that'll be. We'll keep it at a brisk forty-five minutes. <laughs> we'll, we'll give it a brisk forty-five. We're I think we're at like at two pacing. hours yeah. now. We'll, again. Yeah. We'll, so we'll get better at pacing. Just yeah, we'll either get better at pacing or just assume that we're going to be going two hours long. <laughs> yeah. It was um, fun, nevertheless. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, Ali, thank you so much for being on our podcast. Thanks yeah, for having I me. I can't wait to have you on for Final Fantasy VIII because that's your favorite Final mm, Fantasy that you've mm, mm, mm. told me multiple Is it? times. Mm, no. no. <laughs> I, was, I was like, my eyes lit up. I was like, did we just become best friends? Uh, no, no we, we just became we, mortal enemies. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's I fair. Mean, like, for now, we're friends. You'll, you'll, we'll I'm, find a, I'm a replay. You'll, you'll change. You know what? You're, <laughs> not the, you're not the... You're neither the only person or one of the only two people who have been like, I want to be on for Fate. 
because I don't like it. Okay. Right, I'll tell you. <laughs> so, like, you are definitely not alone. <laughs> but it's all right. Me and Carl are ready to defend. We're ready to defend it. So, um, yeah. So, thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, you can find us on Twitter at everyfnff. Uh, email us at everyfnff at gmail.com. And you can yell at us there or give us suggestions or whatever else you'd like to send us. Coupons for shoes. Coupons for a beautiful wig and sexy cologne. Um, Questionable art. wig. Maybe extensions. <laughs> yeah, and a diamond tiara. You gotta be uh, really good at squats, too. Uh, yeah, right, right, right. You gotta right. beat me in squats. Yeah. We so also, if uh, Mig's listening, then I'm just gonna give yeah. him <laughs> We also have a, um, an Instagram, which is also at every F and FF. Um, our intro music was a remix by DJ Cutman. And that is all I have to say. Do you guys have any additional notes? I just uh, want to give a, a shout out to uh, Robbie, Corey, and other Corey uh, for <laughs> their help with trying to decipher that weird uh, kanji. Japanese, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, love those guys. Uh, yeah, friends absolutely. of the show. Uh, yep. I'll probably be asking them more about Japanese stuff. Additional thanks to Alex, as always, our producer. Um, and that is it for this week. We'll see you all next week, so much, uh, next Friday. And uh, have a good week. Yeah. All right. Bye. Thanks, everyone. All right. Next week, our sections that we'll be playing will be from here which will be going back to Eris's house right after this, after the Sector 7 place crash, up until our internment at the top of Shinra Tower. So you'll know that you've gone the right distance once the team is brought in front of President Shinra.